As a medical professional, people always ask me what to do when you have a snoring female in your bed. Snoring females are no laughing matter. And what I always recommend from a medical perspective is you take your thumb and index finger, and what you want to do is just pinch their nose for about 40 to 50 seconds mm -hmm. or until they stop breathing, and then retract back to your side of the bed undetected. I've also had patients who have had success with grabbing a single hair and just yanking it out of their head, mm. or a quick flick on the nose before Ooh. retreating. But I want to remind everyone of the importance of doing so in a stealthy manner to avoid Avoid the discombobulated tantrum that could likely follow. Yes, whether you're turning the light off and on for a few seconds or achieving this result by blasting no more than three seconds of Slipknot psychosocial into their ear, remember that avoiding confrontation with this recently awoken maniac is crucial. I had one patient who went with a quick eyelash pluck in mm. order to rearrange her sleeping pattern but was not quick enough on the draw. This led to a deranged lunatic yelling profanities and then having to have the uncomfortable conversation of reminding her that she isn't the only person trying to sleep. And contrary to popular belief, explaining to her that improving her sleep patterns might give her the strength to finish her chores in a timely manner can also have the opposite effect of igniting this deranged lunatic into overdrive and hence making it even more unlikely for you to achieve adequate slumber. When done properly, at most you will get a what are you doing? To which you completely ignore and you likely have a good 10 to 20 minutes to drift away before the nasal orchestra begins setting up for their encore. The boys, the lads, the boys, the dudes, the boys, the boys, the bros, the boys, the homies, the boys, the dudes, the boys, the the boys, the the new Fellas, fellas, shirts are officially here at RyanLongStore.com. There's two versions, also on the back. And my buddy Suave, who is in the band Ill Scarlet, who some of you probably know them, was the one who actually designed this shirt. RyanLongStore.com. Drake wore one, and that's what made his hammer grow. Starting this podcast, we obviously have to bring up some damning news. Some of you may have heard that the secret is out. That Joe Biden is in fact in cognitive decline. There was a big wow, article coming out, and I know, I know a lot of you out there see him zigging and zagging around. Tough pill to swallow. It's a, I've when I saw that, I go, come on, say Obviously, it ain't so, Joe. Say it ain't so. There's certain people you go, okay, but when you see Joe, you know the guy's a fucking tack. Yeah, sharp as a. She is definitely sharp as a. I go, I'm not a fucking idiot. You know, I'm. I know the news will start say certain things where they're, you know, you go, I know they're lying. But the then lying news media. The lying news media, and then they say Joe Biden's. They say Joe Biden's losing his memory. I go, fuck off. I'm not. <laughs> how big of a roop do you think I am? I'm not voting for Trump. You're not tricking me into that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nice, nice try, no. fake news media. Nice yeah. Try corn pop. The guy could probably remember pi to 45,000 decibels. <laughs> probably. Yeah. But the, you meant, we were talking about it before. The funny part is, obviously, <laughs> that he basically said. He did an emergency. Yeah, he did an emergency press conference. And there's like. But what was the original thing? Well, the original thing is they came out with this report of why he, I guess he can't be prosecuted for like lying and stuff. And, yeah, and they were like, well, obviously he can't be prosecuted. The guy's an old fucking man. Yeah, exactly. And he's like, <laughs> he doesn't remember when his son died and he thought the prime minister. France was like alive, was like a different guy, and yeah. then he's like, emergency press conference, everybody, I'm totally fine, and I can be prosecuted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, no, no it's, it's basically like you were in, uh, you were going to jail for sex assault, and then your lawyer's like, my client has such a small dick, it is not even possible, and you're like, yo, we didn't talk about yeah, this, is what you're going yeah, with? Yeah, what? <laughs> it's like a big trial, and he's like, this man's dick is so small, there is not a chance he could have sex. No, it's, a, it's not even that, it's paternity yeah. hearing. <laughs> he just like this is, this is like if this is his son, then explain my client's tiny penis. <laughs> <laughs> that you go. Can we just can we just He's do the paternity like, yeah, test? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'll go to jail. <laughs> I'll do a little time. Come on. Hey, his lawyers in the thing being like, ladies and gentlemen, the man is a shriveled fuck. <laughs> he Didn't just like cover a story that was like literally that some guy was like, I couldn't have flashed some chick because he had like <laughs> such a big gut that his gut covered his <laughs> cock, and he's like, he like he's like I cannot I remember. Man. He's like I cannot be guilty. The gut <laughs> covers the whole package. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And he got off. But it's so funny. Yeah, then he has to argue like actually I can be prosecuted. I'm sharp as a tack. I remember everything. If I was to steal documents, I'd fucking know. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's OJ essentially being like the glove fits fine. <laughs> there might be some sort of Democratic 4D chess going on here though that we don't see the D little DNC 4D. They're always up to something. That yeah, DNC. I Actually, you know, because everybody's like, well, then he can't he can't run for president. And, you know, that's what everyone's kind of expecting. But then he's calling an emergency hmm. press conference to be like, yes, I can run for president. I'm sharp as a fucking tag. Yeah. So he obviously doesn't want to give it up. That power must be. Nobody wants to give that up. It is. It's the ring. It's the ring. Yeah. But I thought that we should mention this quickly because some people Danny mentioned he has a fiance. He is getting married. <sighs> and but I don't know. <laughs> 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 Went the destination to He thought it's gonna cost It's not, not gonna just cost him It's gonna cost us all <laughs> Not my idea That's what he said <laughs> Not my idea It was never my idea Everybody's invited to Hawaii Danny goes uh, yeah, oh, This sucker's getting married He goes Yeah you're the fucking Paying five grand pal So we're both going down <laughs> But How do you like a vacation That you never budgeted Or planned for How's that sound <laughs> Danny yeah, Okay This yeah. is This is what I'm thinking For your wedding planner I'm an alternative wedding vendor. I'm going to get you a bounce house for your wedding. Okay. It's an option. It'll be no bounce house. I'm an alternative wedding vendor. I love that you want to have a first sword fight instead of a first dance. Maybe do that. I'm an alternative wedding vendor. We're going to have a drag queen MC. No, I'm an okay. alternative wedding vendor. We're going to get your whole polycure involved in your wedding day. I'm an alternative wedding vendor. Hell yeah, you can have your wedding at a haunted house. I'm an alternative wedding vendor. I know which chairs fit fat bodies. I'm an alternative <laughs> wedding vendor. Of course, we're going to have an introvert corner. <laughs> I'm an alternative wedding vendor. You never know what color my hair is going to be at your wedding. So this is what I'm thinking because so basically that she knows how to make chairs that are <laughs> she knows how to like reinforce chairs. He goes, yeah, uh, airplane aluminum, not going to cut it. OK, <laughs> airplane grade aluminum is not going to be good enough. <laughs> for the size of these guests. How funny is that you meeting with your <laughs> with your alternative wedding vendor and she's like, okay, so I'm thinking the where's the polycule gonna be? And you're like, we don't have a polycule. And you're like, you don't have a polycule. <laughs> Is there some sort of... What are the chances you get yeah, the polycule? Where, 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 the is there going to be some sort of designated cuddle puddle area <laughs> during the ceremony for, exactly. for the polycule to just kind of hang around in? Dude, that's so funny being like, my whole polycule is there and they're all in like extra... They're all in specially made chairs because they're too fat. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all like wearing like night costumes and stuff. Like they're like all like doing like a LARPing thing like before. Yeah. Like so that's what I'm thinking for your wedding is like extra big chairs for all the fats, area front area for the polycule, mm. and then a bounce castle for the polycule. The bouncy castle sounds alright actually. Just a bunch of guys like dressed as babies, you know what I mean? And their caretakers are there, the adult babies. <laughs> also, I don't know if you saw this. So McDonald's, so a lot of Tesla got fucking rocked in uh, earnings reports. I don't know if you saw that, but... Well, and also people don't love the fact that their uh, owner is on drugs. You must feel a little bit good about that because Tesla was the one that got away and now it's down a little bit. Yeah, it's still no. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm trying to do a little something for the man. <laughs> well, so McDonald's kind of got rocked too, but it was yeah. funny because... So McDonald's is charging eighteen dollars for a Big Mac in right certain now. areas, I believe. Yes. I, I don't, I'm, I'm curious where those actually are. Well, the thing is, obviously, you know, people can be inflation this or that, but I'm more importantly, it's like, well, too bad, McDonald's. Your market is poor fats, and they, it's like they tried to be a, they're trying to be a fancy pants restaurant yeah. now, but it, so they realized that, and then the CEO went out, and it's just so funny to me that they're doing all this like damage control of. Uh, like kind of earnings getting rocked mm. and the CEO has to come out in like really delicate words being like, we're going to go back to focusing on poor fats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're sorry. We forgot you. We thought we were Chick-fil-A or some yeah. shit. Yeah. He's like, we're listen, nuts. we got away from our bread and butter, which is people who like to eat bread and butter. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be focusing entirely on poor fats from the South because they were trying to be like, well, maybe it is. they've tried all the different things, right? Maybe it's healthy. And then they, they tried to blame it on Hamas for a little bit. They what did Hamas do? Well, they're saying that because people uh, said they supported Israel. Oh, Make, I'll, I'll I'll give you a few headlines here. McDonald's price drops after CEO promises affordability, and this is after they were already getting killed. McDonald's and Starbucks blame Israel Hamas for slower sales, and the recovery might take a while. Yeah, <laughs> that's a guy drowning I mean, in the call. That's the thing, though. That's like the yeah, yeah, but that's also the best kind of just uh, excuse. You go, hey guys, we're getting boycotted because our support for Israel, and what do we? We don't even really support Israel. They're like all. Of our employees are gay and trans. 
kind of fucked us over when this whole Palestine thing started. <laughs> Listen, baby, if you want us to get our prices down, you got to talk to the Ayatollah, man. <laughs> They're trying everything. You know what's so crazy sun. though? How cheap McDonald? I went to McDonald's in London. It was so cheap. There. That's what I'm saying, man. In Dude, America, it was in London. It was a. I saw they had a Big Mac meal it was six pounds. Mm. It's like so cheap. It's like $7. And they're saying it's 18 in America. What's going on? I'll tell you what. I went to one of the McDonald's the other day just to get coffee. You wouldn't believe the fucking land whales that are popping around <laughs> this place, man. It is not a good sight inside well, that restaurant. It seems like they're doing okay. They weren't doing okay. Uh, You're saying the London one's doing okay. No, the well, I'm just saying the the people at that restaurant are affording it. Six pounds? You go, what's that? The guy's just his ankle? <laughs> Yeah, they're not doing jokes. I mean, what about all the money that they're saving on on not having like cashiers anymore? That's the thing too. It's like we're they're not, still there, but like it's not- all cashiers that like would. It's, this is what the cashiers at McDonald's are: women that actually probably would be like a six point two, six point three, but they're just so beat up they're clocking in at a four. What McDonald's are you going to? <laughs> what? It's the one two days ago. <laughs> This is a very small sample size. No, I'm telling you, it's a very. I probably go into a that's McDonald's. A very ac- people are probably listening and agreeing that that's times, a good accurate. I probably go synopsis. to a McDonald's ten times a year, I'd say, and I do not know what you're talking about on that front. It's you, it never, what do you say? What would you describe them as? There's women who are working there who are sixes. Yes, yeah, but they it's don't all cl- like old frumpy ladies. This is what I'm saying to you. Some of them are not old. Some of them are thirty. Oh, you think you think I'm aging them? Like like basically, they're actually just look way older. Like my point is, they are two points less hot than they actually are. And by the way, I clocked them in at six point two yeah, at yeah, first. Yeah. I didn't say this is a supermodel. I, I mean, I fucked a lot of six point twos, right? She doesn't <laughs> look like a six point two. Uh, you fucked fives that <laughs> did themselves up to six point twos. I've this been is defrauded. Six- <laughs> you you pointed. Yeah, you did. You fucked five that put on the makeup and yeah, you know yeah, yeah. polished a turd up to a six point two. <laughs> These are six point yeah, twos yeah, yeah. that are turding themselves down to oh. fives. So like what they're just so. What you're saying scraggly. is there's, there's a market inefficiency here for guys who are looking for sixes. <laughs> I, I do go to I, a McDonald's. Hey, I'm not. If you are in the six point two ballpark and you take a five, you can turn some of those fives into sixes. Because first of all, yeah, they're working women. A lot of them have like the olive oil body yeah. where they're not actually that disgusting. They're just so scraggly. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. It's right. like the guy that has like the beard that has like four hairs popping out of everywhere. You go. If that guy beer. just shaved that all yeah, yeah, off, he adds another point five. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Just don't be like totally skinny, wearing the jeans that don't fit. It's a lot of that. Yeah, or like the male pattern. Some guys have male pattern baldness, just so they won't let it go, so they have like a weird... And you're like, yes. you're actually in a crazy way better off getting rid of it. Way better off. Yeah. So they have a lot of that. That's my point, is I'm not saying McDonald's is swimming with employees that are sixes. Okay. I'm saying that given some work, a lot of these girls were originally a six mm. before they just, you know, before let they themselves got that go to McDon- shit. <laughs> that, that unlimited McDonald's. And it's and you know what it is? It's a, well, there's a lot of fat ones too, so don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah. The fat ones is obvious. Like you could, you know, at least just, if McDonald's, if you're listening, at least just stash them in the back on the fryer later. <laughs> the fry, you don't want to see the fryer, dude. <laughs> The fryer, fryer's a five down to a three. Dude, fryer comes out. They're, they're, they're the fryer's like, dragging you their rang. Leg. <laughs> fryer's definitely you rang, dude. They're dragging their leg out. The, fr- the fryer people are so beat up, they just put their hand in the fucking fryer and don't even notice. Doesn't even fucking make a dent in their beat up skin. <laughs> <laughs> you go, you go, you go, dude. What's going on just here? You go, dude. Your hand. You go. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> doesn't even notice when fingers falling off. His just body's so beat up that doesn't the nerves don't work anymore. Uh, shit. So that's what I'm sort of saying. I'm yeah. saying the front counter staff. I'm saying the presentation squad. Anyways, I'm just saying in terms of the profit excuses that they're making, oh, they're you're raising they're, you're raising the prices, which were like a temporary phenomenon of increased uh, like supply costs. Those were like that was like more of a temporary thing which you're now so you have higher prices and then also but you're getting rid of like like most of them don't have they'll have when they used to have four cashiers now there's like one who's kind of just making sure that all the computers are working yes i agree but even still there are certain things like do you know how the dollar slices can't just be dollar 10 they have to just you know when they inflate they inflate yeah if you're mcdonald's it's like you can you can say the prices and charge eighteen bucks, but it's not going to work in no. my opinion. No, because you're aiming at the wrong demographic. Is all I'm saying. Oh, you gotta sure. if you want to get if you if you're McDonald's 
and your thing like, hey, everything costs more, inflation. It's like, we'll figure out a way to make cheaper burgers. Because, <laughs> you know, you skimp on the ingredients. You don't raise the price. Yeah, yeah. You do what Subway did. This is my take No, anyway. literally, that's what Subway did. Subway just, remember, they were Our like, cheese is remember, fucking cheese from the floor in now. In 2008, they, they were like the financial <laughs> crisis, and the Subway's like, we're bringing back the $5 footlongs when the economy was doing bad. And you're like, how are you doing that? And like, we're putting fucking yoga mats in them. Remember that shit where they were like, they had some really chemical do? where there was like putting yoga mats in the <laughs> bread? <laughs> It was like this yoga mat chemical that was in the bread. Only yeah. I think it was only in Canada. Or exactly. Something. But they were just like, yeah, you got to cut some corners. You guys want five dollar footlongs or not? <laughs> it's made of human puke now. <laughs> You're eating a little newspaper. I feel like there's a lot to talk about this week, but the, the just <laughs> a couple of quick little more things about that because Snoop Dogg is dealing with a similar problem that I am because Snoop Dogg claims Walmart uh, has sabotaged his cereal brands because he has Snoop Loops. <laughs> Snoop Loops. I tell you, there's nothing that guy won't sell. I've been on record. Yeah. And it almost at this point. Him and Master P. Master P I couldn't. What does Master P sell? Uh, uh, he also has a cereal brand. Him is, is I, Master P been like low key, just like having a windshield wiper brand and everything. I don't know, but Master P's involved in this. Uh, in this, it's either he's involved. Oh, he's with involved Snoop, in this one, or he has his own cereal as well. That's like under the line of the Brodus Flakes or whatever the like Snoop's line of cereals. Interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting little corporate sabotage story, actually. It's pedo- it's uh, Master P and it's like a it's master pedophile, but it's just like <laughs> <laughs> that's what me and Danny were saying before, you know, people do the videos where they were doing the um the uh, the dinks. The, that's wait, what it no, but with, I know right? it starts with that, but what did she say? She says, We're wedding uh, I'm uh, an alternative wedding planner. Yeah, yeah, I'm a wedding. We're saying two guys just doing we're pedophiles. <laughs> when we move into the neighborhood, we have to tell everyone we're pedophiles. We always have to explain to our girlfriend what the ex mis- uh, well, yeah, what the misunderstanding was. was. <laughs> we're <Like> pedophiles. <laughs> She's a guy, a pedophile trying to be a social media <laughs> influencer. <laughs> He's like, we are, we're not allowed at schools, but we are allowed on social media. We're pedophiles. <laughs> we always have to take the long route when we're going to the school. We're pedophiles. <laughs> I live under a bridge. We're pedophiles. When I served my time in jail, I always had to avoid the gangs. We're pedophiles. Everyone was always asking me for my papers. <laughs> Uh, that's good shit. We're pedophiles. Vice magazine's always writing stories, but actually, yeah, we're actually pretty good. Yeah, Vice loves us. We're pedophiles. According to Vice, we're not monsters. We're pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm in a similar thing to because I know what Snoop Dogg's dealing with when he's in a fight with Walmart. Because as you know, I've had a similar uh, situation with the Low T Center, right. and I'm not going to go into crazy detail. I'm sure some of you saw. I made a bunch of videos about it, but that I just in some legal troubles. Well, that's what there are some people because I posted a big video. Legal, basically, I posted a joke saying that I was uh, kicked out of the low T center because I had too low a T. And then the low T lawyers at the low T center messaged my agent and basically said, they sort of told me they demand I take it down. And then I made a video being like, I will not be intimidated by the low T center. And it is kind of funny because a lot of people were saying that like, uh, you know, you shouldn't be probably, most people were probably like on my side, but Uh. I think some people were like, actually, I probably think this was a stupid move for you to post that. And you go, yeah, I'm I'm living a high T life, man. (laughs) It's a fucking riskier business. Yeah. You don't get it. But the thing that I was actually joking about with this with my brother, because he was loving it. My brother's a big jack dude. But he was saying, we're saying that uh, the eventually go to court with the low T center. And then I walk into court and the judge is like, sit. <laughs> you go, you see the judge walk in just like super low T. Like I just, the judge walks in like, uh, he can't even hit the gavel. He goes, court's in session. I go, I'm fucked. Uh, I go, actually, I want to settle. <laughs> Your Honor, I'd like to settle. <laughs> That's the worst thing that you want if you're in a, you're in a court case against the low T center. Yeah. And then the, the judge comes in and he goes, <sighs> all right, guys, let's <laughs> do this trial. You go, oh, shit. What you want? If, the be- all the better, though. I'm in a court case with low T center and the judge comes in. Woo! Let's fucking go. Let's do this. I go, let's go, boy. He goes, I got CrossFit in an hour. Let's do this shit. I go, I'm fucking good to go, brother. <laughs> even funnier is that the I lose. I go to court with the low T center, and the judgment is that I have to be the spokesperson for the low T center for life. <laughs> it's like the butler. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So the court, the judge rules that I have to be the low T spokesperson, and then I have to be on everything, just like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the punishment. <laughs> Ryan Long endorses the low T center. <laughs> this is the only place that I ever go to get my tea. I wonder if they're having like a big board meeting about this. They go, 
Well, they have to. Yeah, like like if you, they're watching your video, being like, "What do we do? What's the move here?" Well, I talked to a friend that was a lawyer, and he was just like, "Dude, if any company ever came to me and they were like, this guy posted a joke about us two months ago, we're gonna tell him to put it, take it down." I would have been like, "That's the stupidest idea ever." Yeah, for sure. It would just be like, "What are you doing? Don't do that." <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, I hope Free I don't publicity. It's just a. Think Honest. about how much publicity they got. There's someone who watches the sketches and they go, you know what? Like, well, I guess it is. As funny as this is, tea, yeah. as, <laughs> as funny as this is, someone's like, my tea is kind of low though. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that there was. I live down the street from the low tea center. That's. Uh, I, I don't want to say that I do not recommend the low tea center, but there is possibly an agreement that we can make. Maybe I do. I do make an agreement with them. <laughs> Use promo code Boyscast for your first tea injections. <laughs> Um, okay, quickly, because I just got, I just actually got back from tour. I got off the plane straight here. Mm. Dan, uh, I'm going to be in Pittsburgh next week with JJ, and Danny Ooh. has a couple dates too. Uh, catch me. This just actually got announced right now, February 29th to March 3rd. I'm going to be in Phoenix slash Scottsdale, Arizona, House of Comedy, and then you can catch me um, in uh, Plano, Texas, end of April, and Minneapolis, end of May. Still doesn't have the website to go to, but. Danny Link you tree slash them. Danny jokes. It's all there. <laughs> it's the future. You don't need a website anymore. It's a, trying it's to a, groom this guy into a, a guy. Con, that it's a that condensed sell website. It's just more efficient. Although our, our, my boy Fran has got a website coming. It's just it's, it's coming along. If you want to go to a quick RyanLongComedy.com, that's where you can find tickets to Dallas, Calgary, Link tree slash Danny jokes. Washington, Boston, Winnipeg, Atlanta, San Diego, Houston, Austin, TX. One link. You're not going to be dicking around trying to find those tickets. <laughs> it's easier to find mine. Low T moved and not have a website. I have a website. <laughs> Linktree slash Danny Jokes. I do like, actually. I have a website. That's everyone. I have a website. MySpace.com slash <laughs> <laughs> bit.ly slash Danny Jokes. JJ was fucking a maniac. So I do have a quick update for the people because obviously. Was, J- was JJ making you look at Drake's dick? Uh, no, but almost as gay as he's, t- his whole set's about candles now, because he, <laughs> oh god. so I, the reason I'm bringing this up is because we talked and about it on the he podcast. he kept saying that, yeah, we talked about it on the podcast, how stupid it was, and then he's like, I'm selling out every night now. The candles are moving because I wasn't selling merch, and JJ does like, he does a six minute bits about how he's so pathetic and he needs people to buy his candles, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> He's like, my dogs, he's like, I'm literally going to have to like shred my dogs and feed them to homeless people unless some of you, or don't, don't buy my fucking candles. I'm telling you, 90% of this guy's acts about candles right now. He's just a fucking candle salesman. But they were moving. I love it, I love it. Because I do You're sort of meet him. and greets and I don't have any shirts, so I was yeah. just encouraging everyone to purchase the candles. That's fine. Good I'm telling him. you, probably move 20 candles a night. That's hilarious. <laughs> He was. I'm telling you, this guy was happy about it too. You I told him. I've he, never seen him smiling like this. He, after he made selling such a candles. mistake, in my opinion, about the candles too, because I was like, you should have done the saint style candles, where your face is on the side, so when people burn them, like you know, like the saint or, or the saint candle. Okay, people are throwing these in the garbage the minute they left. <laughs> they bought them out of charity. <laughs> yeah. Someone like, but you, there's just photos on the lid, and you take the lid off and you toss that out for Could sure. Could be a swastika for all they care. <laughs> yeah, Doesn't matter. But, <laughs> these guys, no one's using them. They're they're buy, they're giving him money. That'd be so funny if just like he walks. <laughs> giving this pathetic bald man money (laughs) he comes out at the end of the night and they're just all sitting on top of the trash can (laughs) probably for him he'd be like okay Danny I'm not kidding after people buy his candles they say God bless you (laughs) JJ's like what's the greatest nation in the world donation anybody want to buy candles Go for, him. Go for him. No, it was it was actually ha- good to see. He was, put a smile on his face. Nice. But the funny part is, this is there was just one thing he said that this was the funniest thing in the world. So JJ's whole thing right now is he's off uh, water bottles, right? Because he heard yeah, yeah, the plastics are bad. Yeah. So and everyone probably knows that, but he's off them and he goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, um, I'm, uh, I've been uh, not doing uh, uh, water bottles anymore because of the plastic so much. So what I've been doing now is the you know the the uh, the metal water bottles, like the water bottles that are metal. I go. Are you talking about a can? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, yeah, the, like the can. A- I go, you couldn't think of the word can? Well, he means like a thermos, I think. No. He's just talking he about He means like the liquid water. death can, oh. which he is calling a metal water bottle. Oh, my God. <laughs> He is that going to be his new merch? He says he's going to 7-Eleven to buy a metal water bottle full of water. And I go, please tell me you're not talking about a can. Yep. 
This is how he ropes you in, though. This is how you... Anybody who's ever spoken with JJ for any extended period nah, of time. No, this one, he was struggling with coming up with the uh, word can. He does these bits. He does do that, but this wasn't one of them, man. Mm. He actually was calling a can a metal water bottle because he couldn't come up with the word can. <laughs> you know, the water bottles, they're like metal. Yeah. They're, they're like, uh, you know, but they're like circles, you yeah. know, and they're like flat at the top. Oh, my God. A can? So me and JJ watched the Tucker interview. Watch the whole thing? Watch the whole thing. Skip through a few parts. snooze fest at the beginning. You know what, Danny? The first 15 minutes, we did both say that. We were kind of like, boring. I was like, shit, I'm going to put this on to go to sleep. Legitimately? He goes, everybody gather around, hear the history of Russia, which a lot of people are actually, I saw some, you know, some- People liked it. No, but I saw something on the BBC being like, I'm a Russia scholar and this is bullshit. Just people have been, I mean, obviously, CNN, if he said, you know, the sky's blue, they would have just been like fucking can't stop lying right this is a lie factory but he's also not the most trustworthy guy in the world i don't i don't think we need to reflexively be like just because we hate everybody else being like yeah this guy's right about everything problem is i don't know so I'll, you are correct in saying that yeah and i will say that you were also correct that the first little bit was a snooze fest oh but, real stinker in 1965 he kept saying he goes do you want to do a tv program or do you want to have a conversation sure so this is what i will say in rebuttal to what you're saying yeah though. so yes that is true that he's doing propaganda he has a side of the story that he wants to tell people mm. so does america you know of course okay so this is what I want to do is like, I'd like to be able to hear people's sides of the story and then I'll make my decision. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. We got, you picking up sure. <laughs> saying about the most basic stuff, yep. picking up one and put them down. Yep, yep, no, yep. My point is, is when I evaluate everyone's telling their version of the story, right. And he's telling you more aggressive, but what I'm listening for is just, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, sometimes like it doesn't, it, you don't, you can parse out what they're saying here. I'll give you an example of like, imagine you were talking about like school or whatever. And I'm not saying this directly, but imagine they go, there was like a, you guy and you go, this guy's like a bully. Right. Yeah. And then uh, you go, he keeps beating up this guy. Right. And then everyone else goes, well, if we let him beat up this guy, he's going to beat up everyone in the class. And then you talk to the bully and you go, no, I'm not actually trying to beat up everyone in the class. I just hate this guy because he's partnering with my enemy. Right. And then you go, okay, is that true? And you go, I guess that makes sense. And you go, what's your reason he thinks he's going to beat up everyone else after he beats up this guy? And he goes, he goes, I'm not. I'm just trying to beat up this guy. And you go, what well, kind of makes sense? Yeah. So, so I mean, I'm also- saying, so it's the lies to me. It's like I can, whether he's lying or not, He, if someone tells you a lie, right? And they go, hey, um... Like if someone says, oh, the reason I was late is because I had to go get a train ticket. And you're yeah. just like, well, you took an Uber, though. You're like, well, I don't I, I, like it doesn't make sense. to yeah. me. So the lie has to like, well, make sense. I'll say his most convincing argument from what I, I watched, like about a, you know what I'm a little over half of it. His most convincing argument for like the NATO stuff is he goes like, look, they they we made these deals and then they basically retracted the deals. They, they reneged on these deals and then they want us to make new deals. And he's like, and he's like, well, why would I ever? agree to any new deal because i just expect you to constantly renege on future deals so like i just can't trust you in terms of like the nato stuff in terms of the heard other side of that yeah. story where like those deals were not real well, deals but i'm just saying blah, that was blah, his blah. side of the story you go okay sure but in terms of the like oh well you know like ukraine used to be like the those people are russia which is true like my parents are technically like my mom's i guess from, you would know yeah my mom's from ukraine but they don't consider themselves ukrainian they're like they're russian they're, interesting like, case they study yeah they don't speak and like my grandmother did example. they have an alternative wedding planner is the question <laughs> no they didn't but my my grandmother like i remember asking her like you know about crimea because uh russia went and annexed crimea but like all the people who live in crimea they're like we're russian yeah. we're not ukrainian but just the way the border well, how many people in american are like I'm well but american, it's like the I'm same context would be like mexico Mexican, and, Ca- yeah, and texas or california there's like there are people who are like so what happens if mexico goes hey you know like the, these people in southern california like they're mexican you guys just took our fucking land from us or like texas or whatever yeah so, there was a bunch you of know stuff and they'll be like so we're gonna take it back and you're like yeah no you're not these are the current borders well that stuff was all like didn't matter as much to me because I was I I actually agree with you that it was kind of like yeah 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 that's your version of the story and it's like you don't get the places back it's done you yeah, know what yeah, I mean it's done yeah. however the part where he was like well actually why I did it is because you know NATO uh, keeps uh, that, you know, pushing, get, pushing, yeah. pushing pushing that pushing 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 I was kind of like. Yeah, kind of already thought that, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Like, I already sort of hold that opinion, to be honest. It wasn't really, like, but he kind news of to me. But this is, the differ- okay, this is the difference, though, is when he says it, it's like, it is kind of interesting because I'm like, I hear people say that, and you're like, okay, so I know that is his position. Like, here's an example, right? Mm-hmm. 
if he came out and he said, no, it's not about NATO. It's about like, that's our land. It has nothing to do with NATO. Then I'd be like, well, everyone in America is just like making up stuff that even yeah. to be, even like to be on his side. But it's like, well, that is his position, whether you agree or not. But if it's like same if with Hamas right now. Right. If people are uh, if people are like, oh, they don't want to make a deal or whatever. And if, Ham- if like the leader of Hamas came out and he was like, no, we actually do want to make a deal. They just won't. Do- and then yeah, you're kind won't. of like. Okay, well, that's not what people are saying. Exactly, yeah. So at least, like, what he's saying does sort of make sense and sort of align with what, like, a lot of people already think anyway. Yeah. So it's, like, enough things come together where you're like, all right, that part of it seems to make sense, Yeah. yeah, I guess. You know what I mean? History lesson at the beginning. History lesson. You're like, yeah, that's your perspective, and you want the place back, and you're probably not going to get it, and that's that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously, people don't want you to have it. And... Let me ask you a question: uh-huh. the Nazi stuff. That we, I was like, what I felt the like f- that was a fucking. He was trying to give a little something for the American media. He was kind of that was him being like uh, us being, you know, saying like it's actually better for women if you, you like you're yeah, trying to play yeah, in their the ballpark. Yeah, Do you know when Republican of- candidates? Sorry, yeah, Do you yeah. know when a Republican candidates in America that are kind of like, oh, I'm against like progressive bullshit, but then they'll be like. As an as a Latin American, I actually know, like they right, still yeah, do yeah, it. They still do. Or like that. Nikki Haley recently, she's kind of like, as a woman, I know what it's like um, to do this. Or you know, if I I'm I got in trouble for freedom of speech, but like that maybe that's because I'm a woman. Like they try to use it still. Uh-huh. I felt like maybe that was a little bit Putin trying to be like, oh, I know everything's they uh, they hate uh, the Nazis uh, yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, and I know what this all. I mean, he was trying to justify it in terms of something like I think he thinks the West will because the West hates. Now you go, you guys hate Nazis. Obviously, you fought a whole war. I'm gonna make so. it. About Nazis. So he's like, we're we're closer on the side than we think. He goes, we all hate Nazis, and those are there's tons of Nazis over there. And then he did the thing. It felt with, like him coming up with that to be like the the yeah. love. They're gonna love this Nazi. Bit. It was it was an interesting <laughs> point though, where he I because you know obviously the Canadian Parliament thing. He brought that up where he goes the Canadian Parliament, and but it was weird because he goes, you know, you don't really talk about that in the West that the Canadian Parliament applauded. You're like that's all they talked about for yeah, yeah. weeks. It was the hugest story. That was kind of interesting to me the extent to which like it felt like they are living in a separate world yeah yeah when he said that you like thing he was like oh this small thing that happened and he was like for one it was like an accident well like they, once they, once they once they realized he was a nazi they did were they were like Ugh. Yeah, yeah yeah but i guess he's saying they're like they're so like historically ignorant and like and it but the one well, thing that's true where he goes like what nobody realized that if well he's if right about that yeah if you're fighting against the fucking russians then you're a nazi during world war ii but, but we said that everyone said i, I that. know but the interesting thing was Zelensky, who was there Like, he wasn't like, he should know that. Like, look, you're Canadian, you're like, okay, fine. Like, it's a different part of the world. But, like, he should, for sure, as a Jewish guy who's the president of Ukraine, should be like, yeah, that's not a good guy right here. (laughs) (laughs) We got to tell you here about FitBod. Now, whether you're a seasoned gym goer or maybe you're just starting the fitness journey, FitBod is going to push you to make progress. I personally was just came back from the road, and believe it or not, I think it was uh, one of the crappy hotels we stayed at had a pretty banging gym. Really? Buddy, they have them sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, they have the little hidden gems. I'll tell you what, that is not all of the time, and when it is not all the time, FitBod is the best because it tells you exercises that you would never normally think of. Uh, It also gives you new exercises just to keep things interesting. And you can keep track of yourself. So FitBot is the app. If you're getting in shape or you've been getting in shape. Yes, sir. Exactly. And some people have been commenting in the comments that they thought Danny's was looking okay, too. I don't know about that, but, <laughs> but, but, but working hard. Exactly. FitBot creates personalized work routines based on your goals, fitness level, available equipment, fine-tuned by experienced, certified personal trainers to bring best practices and exercise science to you. We both use it. And more, most importantly, it is way cheaper than a personal trainer, but there's a whole bunch of different benefits that you can learn new movements the right way. They've got a thousand demonstration videos. For me, one thing that I have done is because a lot of times I'll do the same workout for like a month. Yeah. And then I, it's not even that I get tired of it. I just start to like dread it because I get like, but then and as your soon body as I, just gets used to it too. Body, it's like, there is like something where it's like your body legitimately just like gets used to it a bit and it yeah. just doesn't have the same effect. As soon as and I switch it, I like it like, again. Yeah. You just need to snap yourself into some different workouts. So add FitBod to your workout essentials. Join FitBod today. Get your personalized workout plan and you get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at FitBod.me slash BoysCast. 25% off at FITBOD.me slash BoysCast. Fellas. 
If you don't already know about Butcher Box, if you're not already on this, well, then you're crazy. Y'all better get on the box. Butcher Box is sick. I got my dad on the box. I actually got it for a Father's Day present, and now he's been uh, ordering it every subscriber since, which has not been attached to my credit card. So this is on his and own dime. Thank the good Lord. <laughs> thank the good Lord. This is a one time purchase for me. Me personally, I love Butcher Box. I'm doing the steaks, they do chicken. Danny, you said you're more of a seafood guy. I probably get the seafood less. You know I like seafood. I seafood and I eat it. <laughs> no, I actually like the chicken. I like the pork chops, actually. Don't tell my mother. But, uh... <laughs> And you people are go to the grocery store. You don't know what to do. You're just you're taking the steaks. You're shaking them. You don't know what's up. More importantly, there's a lot of probably guys who listen to this podcast who are just you know trying to get a certain amount of protein in. Of course, and, you know it's just so you're probably there's some guys who are going out there. They're buying huge amounts of meat just because they got to get those gains. Mm-hmm. And this is just a way better way to do it. Mix it up. Good cuts. Free shipping and delivery. Curated, customized box plans. Less trips to the grocery store. They got curated tips and recipes based on your box. And also, we're talking savings here. Yeah, for sure. If you just go buy, you know, chicken here and there, little bits of it, it's you're paying the most expensive prices possible. Yes, you are. And with ButcherBox, you don't got to worry about what's for dinner. So ButcherBox is offering our listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential. We're talking three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a whole year. Plus, you get 20 bucks off your first order. So sign up today at ButcherBox.com slash BoysCast. Use the code of BoysCast and choose your free offer and get 20 bucks off. But I guess because it was like a pro Ukraine thing, he's just like, I'm going to shut my mouth and just let them apply. I think there was hope like nobody catches this. Well, apparently that's what everyone who works like close to the Trudeau government, who might have been my inside sources that maybe I'll share with you one day. Sure. (laughs) But a lot of the inside sources are that just like it's uh, Trudeau doesn't listen to anyone. Like it literally could have been one of those things where they're basically like, this is happening. He gets the approval. And then it's one of those, (laughs) you know, in like the movie where the guy's like, "Uh, but sir. And he's like, shut up, sir. I think you might want to know yeah, this. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Hey, 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 we're doing something. And it's like, no, and no. And then eventually just no one says anything. And then he goes, why didn't anybody tell me? Goes, That's oh, sorry. I tried to tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it feels like it was kind of like one of those almost with everything with his government. Yeah. Well, everyone's like afraid of him sort of because he like runs with an iron fist a little bit uh-huh. as much as he seems like he's like pretty boy, happy go lucky. Uh, yeah. Acts like a chick. He really actually is like no one better go against me, mm-hmm. which I guess yeah. also is like a chick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's, he's uh, apparently he's chicks uh already moved on see that she's dating some doctor in ottawa apparently she was banging this dude before they actually split up you didn't see that stop it yeah she's uh she's because this guy's look at me in the eyes he's already you think that's true it's in the National Post. My f- <laughs> my friend, my friend, my friend. This isn't friend. like some fucking crazy rumor. So this guy's Woo! getting divorced. I can't uh, believe you didn't give me this juice I, before. I read it like last night at like fucking one in the morning. This is fucking juicy gossip. Uh, this, guy, so, <laughs> this is some juicy goss right here. So this dude, at um, he's a cardiologist and he's a professor at like, I think, Carleton or U of fucking, Ottawa. You're going to have to fix her back after he blows it out. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, he is currently going through divorce proceedings himself because he left his wife. Who's he? Who was he married to? Some bitch? Some civilian? And then <laughs> yuck, yuck. And then he's he's an Argentinian dude, uh, doctor. Of course, he is. Surgeon. He probably has a fucking accent too. Yeah, Horatio. And, and he's uh, he left his wife for Sophie Trudeau, and so it's coming out in the their divorce that like the the, the girl that he left is basically like this high profile person or whatever. And she might have just got tired of having. And, uh, having to have all the bulls coming in, fuck her. <laughs> she was like, dude, I wasn't in the. Can we just get a just a normal dude? Yeah, like I, I don't need to be getting fucked by a bull three times a day. So he <laughs> too much bull. But anyways, yeah, that's the current story. So they were basically. How does up. she like having sex with someone that doesn't cry? Did she mention that in the story? <laughs> well, she's not involved in it. This is their family's divorce proceedings, and in that came out that he's basically leaving his wife. Do you think he's on the Trudeau? prowl, Justin Trudeau? For dudes. <laughs> <laughs> for gay men <laughs> I don't know <laughs> probably 
I mean, you gotta. I'll be the fucking biggest bust. I mean, remember in Jack Layton, there was a guy who was like, I think he was he the premier at the time. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was basically the MP. Yeah, but I'm saying it was basically the governor, and he yeah, and he got and he was also the head of the party, and he got caught at the fucking tuggers. The fucking tuggers. Yeah, Olivia Chow was his wife. Oh yeah, he had an Asian wife too. He was the mayor of Toronto. Who's the mayor of Toronto right now? Shit. Yeah, dude, being the governor going to the tugs is such risky business, <laughs> oh, dude. dude. I mean, Rob Ford pay was the doing extra fucking... money to get her to a hotel room. What are you doing, dude? Pal? Rob Ford was doing fucking blow in just restaurants. <laughs> like people were just like, you I literally walk to the back of a restaurant. The mayor of Toronto is just like doing lines of coke, buddy. If I'm like crazy high profile, doing a line seems less uh, <laughs> less risky than fucking. Slurking into the tugs. Yeah, all things, yeah all going things. down to Etobicoke to fucking slurk into the tugs. <laughs> Come on, buddy. There's other people are going to see you there. Like yeah, even of if, course. but see what I'm saying. Even if you don't get caught in like a bust, yeah. other dudes are going to be like, yeah. Fucking, but, well, but is I guess the premiere at the but, fucking tugs. Well I, well, I guess that's the whole thing though. Is everybody's kind of sworn to secrecy at that point? Who the, the fuck sworn to secrecy? Well, I guess the people there are fucking doing something shady too. So yeah, but we know people are. That's who true. Just we know be like, yeah, I was at the fucking tugs and jug. Fucking Jack Layton yeah, was there, Rick, like Rick Rowley or something. Yeah, we. I know That's lots true. of people that are not afraid to. They're out and proud tuggers. Yeah, I guess I don't know. Yeah, that is a very risky move. I mean, Robert Kraft got zapped on that. Oh, Robert Kraft was owner of the. Yeah, but politicians that was a, that was tougher sting, than. Though. Hey, I'm. If I owned a football team, I don't think I'd be that crazy afraid to go to a tug. Yeah. If I was a high-powered politician. The tugs would seem like a fucking crazy gamble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You lose your whole political. I don't think. In Queens, to... they're getting busted right and left too. Yeah, I don't think he had to uh, step down though from that. I don't think that actually caused him. I don't remember what happened either. I don't remember what happened with the dude getting busted at the tugs is incredible. Did he say he was doing research? That's what you gotta say. Uh, yeah. Or he probably said he thought it was just a normal massage parlor. Uh, That's what you go with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. So there was no charges. It was, it was, uh, no charges in Leighton massage parlor leak. <laughs> uh, basically, in about he he made a 1996 visit to a massage parlor that they somehow found out about. Oh, that's not that bad. So they the found guy. out that he went back in the day. Yeah, he went back in the oh, day. Oh, no harm, and then, no foul. And then, and then he just I'm picturing it. him getting like shimmied out by the cops. <laughs> nah, no, no, no. It was like a... I don't know what the leak was. So they just found out back in the day he went to Tugs. It is funny that he loves Asians. Yeah, so it says, does anyone care of the new... Yeah, is, uh, uh, there was a Toronto police raid on a rub and tug massage parlor 15 years ago and this was so... Oh, he was night. busted in a raid was busted in 2011. Dude, and if I got busted in a fucking 96. tug raid, I would just be like, obviously I'm not going to try to get into politics. <laughs> I think that's done. Well, he did. <laughs> Respect, and, and he was successful for it. So good respect. That's, let let it be known to the fellas. Sex work is real work. Sex work is. I mean, real he's NDP, work. right? Like that's the sex work is real. This work was party. way before the fucking a prostitutes was a good thing. He's a pioneer. <laughs> He would have been, yeah, if that was today, he would have been better off. Because that was way before it was like going to the prosties was actually like a, yeah, yeah, you're a, a, a good thing. We will, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone should be doing this. <laughs> Dude, that'd be so funny if like a Republican uh, pr like got busted with like a pr uh, like a, two prosties and he just went with like the sex workers. We, we were, like, he went like full 180 and he was like, yeah, I think that women should be doing this and I'm supporting. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just full goes for it. Just it's just an honest, honest job, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, it's like going to the mechanic. Nothing different. <laughs> going, checking into work and sucking dudes' dicks is there's zero difference from that. Let me tell you, it's not a job I want to do, but I'm glad someone does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll tell you an interesting thing. So, I'm on an email thread at. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm not even going to say that. I'm on an email thread, and I accidentally got added to the email thread. And it's not really the hottest goss, but someone's a comedian's going to Singapore. Yeah. And they uh, sent me the rules about their jokes and stuff like that, what they can say and what they can't say and all okay. this stuff. And they accidentally put me on the thread, so I got this big list of stuff for the Singapore thing. It is kind of interesting. I mean, I imagine. And then they said, the oh, sorry, we sent it to the wrong person. I was like, no, nah, you sent it to the right yeah. person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I imagine with the whole Jocelyn Chia thing story, I hope it's not her, but... It's not her. Uh, that whole story, uh, yeah, they're, they, they cane you for spitting on the streets there. Under non -main mainstream lifestyles and behaviors so there's a category yeah. that you can't talk about non-mainstream lifestyles and behaviors so your polycule bullshit would not fly <laughs> dude like but the thing is can you be like 
Look how stupid! Look how stupid these polycules are. Like, is there some like? Can you criticize, make fun of them, or no reference of? You them? have to give them your whole set typed out. It would be impossible to start being a comedian there. You literally have to yeah, type yeah. out your set. Dude, imagine you're being a comedian, and before you say things on stage for the first time, you have to pr- type that's it what, out and get it approved by the that's government literally officials. Yakov Smirnov when he went on Marin. He was like the first Western comedian in Russia. And he literally, he's like, I had to send in my set to the Department of Humor or whatever. <laughs> like, because, like, you know, in Russia, in Soviet Russia was like all like Pretty fun. insane bureaucracy. You know, that's just some like grody bitch who's not funny at all, too. Oh, for sure. So, but like, you have to send it in, and then they would like just send you back everything that's like allowable, everything you're sad. And like, I told you I had to do that. Chewing on ice. Sorry. Like, sorry. sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry, mate. <laughs> sorry about that, bud. No, when I was, uh, when we were in the band in Canada, when you get these grants, we had to send in our lyrics and then like some team of stuffy old ladies would have to go through it and approve them. Yeah. And they'd like, they would make changes. They were not, they were pretty liberal with their input as well. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, they had a lot of things. They were like, you know, and... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there was one line. There was things like, <laughs> it was less of the racially insensitive stuff and more sex just stuff, like right? sex shit or whatever. But I remember the one guy, he goes, in one of the lines, he goes, my epidermis is white, but my dick is black. And they didn't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> shit like, <laughs> but you'd have to be on these phone calls with like these fucking ladies from the government saying, they know, like this, my yeah, dick like, is black. Yeah, fucking. We, we don't appreciate. That. Yeah, it was all like funny shit too, right? And they're not even like realizing that it's a joke. They're just like, you saw, oh, this line where you said you fucked the shit out of nothing. Like, yeah, yeah. They're ridiculous, right? <laughs> Right? So they said no lifestyles and behaviors, including but not limited to alternative sexualities. Okay, so just nothing like you could just. They go, we're still just we're a little behind, but we're still just like if you want to shit on your wife. I mean, this is legitimately no no gay shit, no fat chicks, keep them cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it is, right? Yeah. But you have to imagine, dude. That is so funny if if you have to give them your your set and then they uh, send you a letter back formally from the government that says your set's too gay. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how the, it's the enforced. government's like. No, this like is I wonder some, how it's enforced if you go, yeah, yeah okay, and then, and then like you do it on stage. Like, is there someone? You know what I mean? I think what happens is the fucking promoter gets it. You know right, what I mean? Right, the promoter. The promoter. But like, gets if you it. if you decide to go off script during that thing, are they like yanking you off stage with a show? cane? Shows over, and then they shows and then they sh- beat your ass with that cane. Yeah, I think a lot of these places they have an official present. They mm-hmm. don't want you polluting the minds with your homosexual bullshit. But they're not restricted internet there. They're not like because Russia. That was another thing. Everybody's like, oh, he's in, he's doing you know meeting Tucker Carlson, Putin, and it's going to be on X. But they don't have X in Russia. It's blocked. Like Twitter is blocked in Russia right now because they don't want uh, other sides of what's going on coming out. Mm. So, anyways, I don't think Singapore Singapore is free in that sense. They have full un- unfettered access to the internet. I'm pretty sure. Mm. So, anyways, politically and racially sensitive content is frequently censored in Singapore. On the online. online. Oh, okay, so there. You go. Yeah, as you were saying that, I didn't know enough to. I thought I thought it, Singapore but... is supposed to be like we're pretty open. We are restrict, obviously, but alternative sexualities are not happening. Fetishes. So you, <laughs> you know what I mean. You can't yeah. be like. So I'm a sub, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, my boyfriend in Brooklyn's a dom, and being a sub, we're yeah. subs. We're subs. Um, fetishes in addition uh, they also said someone someone's gonna mention their they said in the script uh, you mentioned your bisexual friend and uh, we want they want further information about how the bisexual friend is gonna be mentioned uh, so we can approve or disapprove this bisexual friend like yeah, why do, they're like come on just say they're your friend no no <laughs> she is saying that yeah yeah but I'm saying she's always oh. saying my friends bisexual they go just what that's not important <laughs> yeah 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 just say it's your friend what, yeah, what do you need to know that you have a bisexual friend? That's yeah. fine. We don't care. Don't ask. Don't tell. That's what they're doing. So no bisexual friend. And then there's another one that says she, uh, uh, in a part of it, there is a part about discharge. And there's a whole paragraph about them <laughs> discussing about they need more information about this discharge line. Whether it's gonna be They good. must pay. You must, these gigs must pay out the <laughs> ass, though. That's the thing. The more the, like, there's all these hoops to fly through, they're probably like getting flying, like flown like first class. Probably like pays, a good question. Ton, pays tons of money. There's no way. you're not. Where's going- the money come from? I don't know. I don't know, Where does all this well, extra money come from that they're getting allegedly? They're super rich. Like it's a so very you think tickets are just really expensive or something. Probably. 
I don't know. It could no just be a normal amount, but some people are just really popular there. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, maybe, yeah. Like, some people are That's Asian, true. so, like, they kind of, right, are, right. they, like, sort of pop off there like, more. Uh, yeah, I guess, like, Uncle Roger, like, he, Nigel probably goes and tours there. Ex uh, yeah, exactly. He might yeah. be banned, too. Yeah, I wonder if he's, what's his status is there? <laughs> I think, yeah, he seems to be getting, like, banned from a lot of those countries. <laughs> But I thought that was super funny. I mean, Justin Chia's thing, remember, like, the Singapore, like, in their, uh, whatever, Congress, like, they had to make a statement about her. Mm hmm Like, in their, literally, their highest, highest... Department of Humor. Politics, like, a public statement during their, like, sitting of their Congress being like, we denounce her. Did you ever, uh, I know we already referenced Seinfeld once, but, you know, uh... You can never reference Seinfeld too much. Well, it's kind of like Simpsons, too, where they just covered everything, so it's hard not to... I actually to. watched Citizen Kane last night for the first time in my life. Have you ever seen mm, that? Yes. It's, it, it's, it's so weird. People are like, it's the greatest movie of all time. Mm -hmm. like it's from 1941. It's Orson Welles. He was, like, 26 years old. Wrote and started in it and then but it's all because one of the best simpsons episodes ever the one where mr burns with bobo yeah, yeah, yeah. remember that and then i was like <laughs> the like, game from citizen game yeah, or whatever but i'm like fuck i feel like i've seen this before and then i'm like i'm seeing it i've like all these references i'm now getting because i saw this episode of simpsons 20 years ago yeah they've covered every single thing every so, single right? thing but it's apparently it's supposed to be one of the best considered one of the simpsons episodes ever as well i don't know there was a ranking like that there is there oh of course well, did you know when uh, Jerry was trying to not be funny and they yep. was dying? He goes, "What do you do?" He goes, "I'm a comedian." <laughs> he goes, "Death is despair." <laughs> That's what it's like going on a date with one of these people that uh, works like at the Department of Humor. Oh. It was just a girl being like, "Yeah, I'm just, I mean, you know, everything. I don't really find that funny. I don't find that funny. I don't find yeah, that funny." You that go, "What do you do for a living?" You go, "I work for the Department yeah, of Humor." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting any of the like. Uh, what do you? I work for the Department of Humor. I'm a bit of a comedy nerd. <laughs> <laughs> or I guess that yeah, would yeah, be yeah. worse where it's like a really unfunny person that's always trying to be funny uh, like oh I got your tongue yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's got the tie and he pretends it's his tongue <laughs> and he goes I'm the head of department of humor <laughs> the head of department of humor <laughs> would be funnier if it was a wacky guy who comes in and squirts yeah. the fucking <laughs> flower yeah. into your face <laughs> He's just never. He's always on the Department of yeah, Humor. He goes, oh, I'm not feeling so well. He just pulls that whole thing out of his mouth. <laughs> oh, 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 it's not ending. Oh. <laughs> he goes, hey, we like want to hack. <laughs> like the biggest <laughs> fucking hack of all time. The head of the Department of Humor is probably such a hack. <laughs> That's a way better visual. <laughs> That's a way uh, better visual. Way better. He goes, okay, so we talked about the jokes. Like, definitely going to get to the jokes. First, we want to go to the mystery of what happened to your nose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's literally goes, so I see that you don't have an opener here of uh, you are the love child of uh, one person and another person. I highly recommend doing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good opener right there. <laughs> he, the Department of Humor, uh, you go, just wait in my office. And then you just hear the knock and he goes, uh, knock, knock. And he goes, yeah, uh, just come in. I'm waiting for you. He goes, no, you have to say who's there. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say who's there. <laughs> uh, right. Department of Humor. Okay, come in. Okay, no, you have to no, say Department of Humor. Come in. <laughs> who's there? Department of Humor. <laughs> <laughs> department oh, of <laughs> head of department of humor is definitely wacky. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he's coming at. <laughs> <laughs> he's, an, he's basically an animaniac. <laughs> Does it say actually who get who? Like, is there an official title of where this gets sent? What like, do you mean? Like, is there actually? It's called the Department of Humor, or like, do they have like? Mm. Is it like the State Department? I actually screenshot of this email. It's not oh. on there. Oh, okay, I'm, I am curious. Bud Light's back in the news. Oh, Bud Light's back in the news. <laughs> well, it's funny because... What a ride it's been. Huh? It ha Bud Light has been a real ride of this millennium. And you know what? Watching the Putin thing and he's trying to keep up with American culture, it was just like, if you, you know, because there were certain things if you're from over there and he's trying to pay attention and you're just like, Okay, so but they don't like Bud Light because it's gay. Oh, they don't like it because it's too gay or it's not yeah, gay. Some yeah. people think it's too gay. Some people <laughs> think it's not gay. Is it gay now? It's like, we're not gay no more. Yeah. And now it's uh, now they're like the full-on least gay beer of all time. I mean, they're literally just back to what they were one year ago. They're more, though. Yeah, well, they're... Course, they went they from... They went, they, they went too far off course one way, and now they have to course correct. They're just like swinging the wheel back the other way as well. They as went... Possible. Yeah, they went from legitimately... Our spokesperson is like a guy who turns to a, a guy who turned into a woman yesterday rolling around in a bathtub <laughs> yeah to now being like the but you like every ufc guy just being like drink blood. yeah <laughs> Shane here's Gillis. like here's yeah here's peyton manning throwing a fucking pass to a clydesdale so hard that it explodes the clydesdale <laughs> 
Yeah, it used to be Kid Rock shooting the cans because they're bad. Now it's Kid Rock shooting the cans because they're good. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like Kid Rock's like deployed down in fucking uh, <laughs> the Gaza Strip, and he's like his rocket launcher runs out of rockets. He goes, "I need something else." And someone hands him a fucking Bud Light. He goes, "God damn it, this just might work." And it's like, <laughs> Pew! just like takes out the head of Hamas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this Got calls him. for a bud light this calls for a bud light <laughs> yeah see you in muslim hell <laughs> it's just like it's just the cop coming in and busting a gay brothel like <laughs> The New York gay brothels, yeah. <laughs> just kicking them out, arresting all the gay guys. They're all getting gobbled out, and then the cop just cracks a Bud Light. <laughs> well, what was like the gay Stonewall thing? Stonewall, Stonewall. Yeah, it's the Stonewall. It's the, yeah, just Stonewall the, in reenactment. <laughs> just the cop at Stonewall in cracking a Bud Light while he's fucking. Or they're like they build a new border wall just out of Bud Light empties. <laughs> <laughs> like a college student, you know, you have the wall. We we'll go. You might wonder what happens to all these empties once they're done. Well, I'll tell you. We're sending them all down to the southern border to make sure none of these migrants get in. Bud Light. They're saying they can can secure our border. Every can is made from border securing titanium. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, Bud Light went so hard the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the new CEO is just yeah walking around the factory smoking cigars, <laughs> high fiving people, asking everyone to smell his fingers. Yeah. Legitimately, you know what's funny though? I saw a lot, they had some, no choice. It's the only all, all, alternative way back though. Well, uh, yeah, but and the UFC deal. I've never seen anyone go this this far the other way in my recent history. Anyway, no, no. Well, they they fucked up so badly. Yeah, the thing is, the fuck up wasn't even so bad in the deal. Like they the were Dylan the example. Mulvaney they made thing, the example of the Dylan Mulvaney thing was obviously a huge fuck up. But then when the girl who who's behind it, her Gillette's Zoom in my things, opinion was crazier. With the trans stuff? Dude, Gillette's like, hey, girls should be hairy. Men's razors. <laughs> like, what you know what? I don't this? think pe anybody's identity are tied to a razor company like they are with Bud Light. Like, people, mm. like, really are, like, who when they're light beer drinkers, it's like there's... They felt, like, cores. jilted. Yeah, they're like, this is, like, yeah. my identity you're fucking with here. I don't care about razors. Like, razors, you can be like, ah, I'm not buying Gillette. But people are like have fights with it's like dodge and ford you know like people are like you know what i mean you're like i'm i'm a i drive a ford truck like i never drive uh -huh. a dodge like it's crazy and and they're in the trenches like defending the brand and then the brand's out here being like we're gay yeah we're gay and you're like <laughs> what are you guys doing to me <laughs> like you know what ammo all my coors lights buddies have right now <laughs> yeah i'm like in the fucking <laughs> it's like the r kelly i'm out here fighting for my life <laughs> You were out there fighting for your life if you were a Bud Light guy yeah. for a bit. Dude, remember I told you, I went to that <laughs> My bar. My stepdad's a Bud Light guy. I was killing him. Dude, remember I went to, I went to a, a, uh, did Saratoga Springs, uh, and we went like on the outskirts to some like just like dive bar, kind of like local watering hole, and there was like one guy drinking Bud Light, and he was fucking getting it <laughs> from everybody. Like, and he was just like, yeah, yeah, but like every, oh, like he's fucking drinking Bud Light. Like, that was not easy. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that I kind of thought was interesting though is like uh, I saw Matt Walsh and some other people but like mainly he's leading the charge being like the boycott's not over because they yeah. haven't apologized uh -huh. and I was kind of like isn't what you wanted them to do this I feel like but to me it would be like kind of like demanding apologies to me is kind of like even in my real life I never need anyone to apologize to me. You just like no, do the, I mean, definitely just, not a corporation. Yeah, like, who like, needs an apology? Like unless it's like an Aaron Brockovich type scenario where you go, yeah, this corporation like poisoned my well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you don't and, want and an apology even then. You want money. Yeah, but I'm just like, I would like money and maybe an apology. That's for, what for Bud giving Light should give. Every, should they, they should have to give one dollar to every like a class action <laughs> suit where they give every, like a hundred bucks to every guy that called gay, got called, got called gay. gay. <laughs> Class action suit, just, That's just guys funny. going to the courtroom being like, it was our monthly poker game. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, I, I guess that to me, demanding the, like wanting the if they already did, if they're doing what you want to do, I feel like that's what you'd want. I feel that's why I was kind of yeah, confused when they're all like, it's a corporation, they're, I'm not, but they're all like still mad. And I was kind of like, if anything, you should be happy, they're doing well, exactly what you want. They just don't want they, you know, they want to say an apology, seems as like as kind of chick cudgel. shit to me from a beer company. Yeah, I'm like the, the thing is you go you just stop drinking their beer, okay? 
Like I'm not fucking dragging. Like this is well, a bigger ultimate, thing to them. It was ultimate a big, like, chick shit to just thing. never let this go. That's my point, yeah. kind of. It seems like it to me. Yeah, you're like, look, it's over. You this won. is the whole thing. It was with like comedians. They were like yelling at comedians, and then people stopped apologizing because it didn't help. Yeah, the like, only reason people apologize is if it helps. You know, like you literally you won. And just take the W. You're That's being, how I feel about yeah, it. Yeah, just like you're being kind of sore losers or sore winners at this point, kind of. That's how I a little bit feel about like, it. Whatever. Don't drink. The, if you don't like the beer, don't drink the beer. It's the worst beer. <laughs> like it's so <laughs> Tell that shitty. To the spokesperson Shane. It's so shitty. Say it to his face. I would say it to his face. I like Coors Light though, better than Bud Light. It's, personally, it's beer for alcoholics. Hmm. It's like when you literally are drink so much you can't pace yourself, and then you're like, I have to drink light Let's beer. Take a percent off this, yeah. Yeah, take two percent off. Otherwise, I'm just going to be getting DUIs out the ass. Like you know, <laughs> you're right. It is a DUI prevention. It's mechanism. a DUI prevention. <laughs> literally, that's what it is. It's like uh, uh, the only. It's for people could just drink it all day, and you're like, yeah, I can still kind of drive. I forgot how fun talking about Bud Light was. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they do something else with that. Yeah. That's one of the best things ever happened is the fucking Bud Light becoming yeah. gay. It's probably the best story of the last three years. They won't be doing it. <laughs> I actually, I agree. The boycott's not done. No, the boycott's not done. <laughs> We're back on, baby. <laughs> we can't let this end. I thought it was funny, though, because of the Shane SNL thing, which also I was just kind of thinking it was kind of cool. Like even uh, Dave interviewing like R R R F K yeah, and stuff like that. Just like, it was like a real actual like presidential candidate and it's just like our body you yeah, know what I mean yeah, like yeah. interviewing them and then like I, I, Shane became like the biggest comedian in the world and like I just thought it was kind of cool but also I thought it was also cool where if you saw uh, TMZ basically when Shane uh, so Gillis is doing so SNL and then TMZ released they said resurfaced footage and it was like it wasn't resurfaced it was they resurfaced yeah you it. went and found <laughs> it you went through you signed up for a compound media subscription it is legitimately <laughs> going to your fucking girlfriend and being like well this came across my desk a photo yeah. of you in 19 you know yeah you're like it wasn't you went and found 1998 it. also we should have on a date be, with every guy. comedian should be amnesty from anything ever said or done on compound media that should be like <laughs> yeah, we should have like a presidential Compound's amnesty. That's a tough one. To, when, you, when those compound tapes yeah. start coming out, you go, I, I, even the Shane one, I go, I thought this was behind a paywall. Uh, wait a second. <laughs> like, literally, that's every comic goes, oh, wait, wait, wait that, that was online? Uh, <laughs> I legitimately too I go I thought that was like a, We kind of had a deal Or no we would ever Someone pointed this out Though they go That's funny The TMZ had to pay For the compound subscription yeah. To get to it But like Legitimately when you saw that You are just like Compound huh? I thought <laughs> Everything we said there Was uh, kind of behind a paywall Yeah it could kind of Be used against us for life You say <laughs> Yeah Huh yeah, Every comedian in New York That's a pretty wild shit Behind yeah. that paywall Yeah <laughs> Okay I agree Compound <laughs> yeah. amnesty for yeah, sure yeah, dude. There should be a com General compound amnesty But I have a question What do you think So Because a lot of the people Who probably uh, are writers for SNL have been there for like a bit, right? And they they are pretty like young, like very diverse crew of writers at SNL. Um, do you think there's any scenario? Because you know how they like a bunch of them were like when Chappelle was there, and they were like where they were all the whole, like. Do you think they're gonna sandbag him? No. And, like, is there any scenario where they go like they they go, they're like here's like, no because all the bad people that are cool there like him. Oh, okay. Uh, everyone like everyone like Shane, but like you know, like Che and all those guys are all friends. Yeah, with him, obviously, but, but I'm saying uh, right because I guess they're the head writers. No, he's I, a comic in New York. All those guys know him. But Chappelle, the thing with the Bo and Yang, so Chappelle basically went on SNL and he just like showed up and then he went up to the thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then Bo and Yang essentially, allegedly, uh, moved to the other side of the stage to like not be around him, right? Yeah. If that happened. I think a part of that is just like the game's the game where it's like, dude, everyone that likes him has been writing articles about how shit pals the devil. If he was in a photo being like, yes, sir. Right, right. I bet you off camera, guys like that. I you, know how, couple, you know how the game is yeah, with those yeah. people. Off camera, they do what helps them. And I don't right. know him personally, yeah. but they do what helps them. But on camera, he was just like, I have to pretend. I bet you he's like kind of like, oh, I have to pretend I don't like this or I'm going to fucking, f I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to get it from my fans kind of thing. Like, that's what my hypothesis is. I wonder, like, I'm not talking but about my the, point, just the so facing me, people. Just yeah. to finish that one last point, the TMZ basically released that, and every person was like, fuck off, TMZ. Yeah. Like, they released Even Harvey thing. in the thing, like, they go, it's resurfaced, and then even he is like, yeah, you know, people say lots of crazy stuff if you go back far enough. 
Dude, they posted that <laughs> everywhere, and every person was like, "Go fuck yourself, yeah, TMZ." What you, yeah, what are you trying to do here? So I, I mean, thought that was like, I thought that was good that the I mean, TMZ the boys exactly, sort of ran that comment section. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, the but TMZ kind of got exactly what they wanted out of it because I don't think they care if it's they're getting dunked on. They just want the impressions, so they're like, "Sure." Yeah, I think you're probably they're, right about they're that. Scummy like that. They're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. I mean, TMZ was scummy before this stuff. Yeah. TMZ was like, resurface photo of Gwyneth Paltrow showering. And you're like, <laughs> you took that. <laughs> no, TMZ was like. It's like Harvey Levin as like a fake plumber being like, I'm here to fix your shower. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, video footage of Harvey Weinstein having sex <laughs> taken from under the bed. It's like, wait, so you guys were there in the room? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're kind of... The TMZ was the, the also the kings and queens of like, look at uh, this person put on three pounds. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> it was just like a guy at the beach sitting in a weird position. <laughs> like De Niro put on a couple and he's just like, like an 80-year-old yeah, man just bent man. over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Travolta's body doesn't seem so bikini right ready <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, uh, I'm curious to see what the sketches end up like because this that is one that we're but they the were they all all of those places that were like dirt scum sort of switched in to be like but we're darts dirt scum to fight racism right. i will I, say though that i think now that's rubbed off now they're just back to being crap all, all good old-fashioned dirt this, scum and people are going back to good old-fashioned go fuck yourself tmz yeah, yeah. i mean the shane thing is a huge win for white comedians everywhere <laughs> white male comedians <laughs> We are so back. It's been a lot. It's been a long time coming. Nah. Um, back to what though? I don't know. Just like, not like I mean. It's just it's some kind. You know, there's nothing they can give us. Nothing they can take from us. Some we kind fucking of have a, We have a studio and our fucking yeah, yeah, podcast know, and a YouTube know, channel. Like there's just, nothing they can give me. Nothing they can take from me. That is true. I guess just in terms of uh, I, have just, I just have no relation with these people whatsoever no, 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 no. In the industry There's nothing they can take from me Nothing you can give from me It's like even Shane Like does SNL It's like okay If they take away SNL It's like okay I'll go back to doing arenas It's like none of this matters Yeah, yeah none of this matters for him No 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 For sure Fellas Factors delicious ready to eat meals Make eating better every day easy Wherever tomorrow takes you be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have 35 options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with the 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. What are you waiting for? Get started today. Have a feel-good week of meals ready to go. Personally, I've been on the protein meals right now, which comes with the meat, and they always have good veggies veggies and sides too yeah and the best part about them is honestly just you put them in the microwave for two minutes and it tastes like a meal that you spent half an hour cooking Bingo. no cleanup Bingo. that's the biggest thing too is if you buy yourself nothing is more of a drag than cleaning up for yourself oh my god you're like yeah, i didn't even make food for three people or two people no thanks like just one, yeah so factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast upscale options done easy it's flexible for your schedule get as much or as little as you need by choosing six to 18 meals per week plus you can pause or reschedule deliveries at any time which i did pause mine when i went on tour actually the one time there you go Head to factormeals.com slash boyscast50. Use the code boyscast50 to get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while the subscription is active. That's code boyscast50 at factormeals.com slash boyscast50 to get 50% off your first box, two free wellness shots while the subscription is active. And a sponsor that I've always been particularly pumped to get on this podcast, which is Blue Chew. So we're talking sex my friends mm -hmm. uh, 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 we're talking a little hubba hubba and we are talking Rawr. and she's the one gonna be saying hubba hubba because mm -hmm. cause you got some lead in that pencil you can increase the performance get that extra confidence in bed we're talking bluechew.com it's a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis and Levitra but in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost uh, 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 uh. the best part it's all done online. You're not going to the doctor's office. No awkward conversations. Uh, you're not potentially going in and then be face to face with even sometimes a woman, which is I've had a joke mm -hmm. about that because I did do that once. I went to the doctor. Isn't awkward. It? <laughs> <laughs> um, in a discreet package, comes to your door. No waiting in line at the pharmacy. Tablets are made available in the USA. 
prepared and shipped direct to your door. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. That is the slogan. Chew it and do it. Chew it and do it. Chew it and do it. Chew it and fucking do it, man. Do it. We've got a special offer for the listeners. Try Blue Chew for free. For free. This is a bone on them. Mm-hmm. When you go to bluechew.com, use the promo code BOYSCAST, and you just pay the $5 shipping. That is bluechew.com, promo code BOYSCAST, to receive the first month free. B- visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Uh, one more thing on the topic of comedy news, and I'm not going to go that deep into it, but it was just really funny since the Cat Williams thing. Monique went on the same yeah, podcast and she trashed Oprah and Tyler. And it was like, <laughs> so now instead of like going on and being like, this person sexist, this person racist, the new thing is you have to just go on and expose <laughs> everyone you've ever met. <laughs> Dude, she's obviously but, uh, trying to pull like a Cat Williams, right? Yeah. So now it's the thing you go on the like the J podcast and you're just like, well, and uh, let, where do I start? So Tyler Perry <laughs> fucked me over. Like, here's my yeah. She's, she's like, she's hey, let really me just better. read to you my personal text with yeah. Tyler Perry. Yeah, yeah, she's real bitter too. She was. Uh, They're all trying to pull a Cat Williams. Yeah, Monique is specifically because she was the one who I guess she doesn't get because she won an Oscar. What did she win an Oscar for? For what did she win an Oscar for? She won an Oscar for something. Being the Grouch, from the sounds of it, huh? <laughs> she won. Um, Woo! Best, IT Joe, best supporting actress in 2010 uh, for Precious. <laughs> she she played uh, Precious's foot. Remember when you dressed up for Precious <laughs> for Halloween and you didn't even do it on Halloween? It was just your normal outfit. Do you remember that? Just a guy in blackface. Yeah, 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 I do. I do remember that. Um, do you know, what do you do? A precious themed wedding. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? <laughs> Whoopie cushions on everyone's chair. That I like. And then you, you're the real department of humor head. <laughs> the department of humor head definitely has a whoopie cushion. Oh on yeah, your chair. yeah, 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 definitely a whoopie cushion. <laughs> you sit down in the office. Of the department definitely of wearing suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> He has a tie. He has yeah. a funny thing that yeah, the spins. spinning tie. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's take a look at these jokes. Ooh, the discharge. That's not gonna work. Nah. Yeah, but he still he has to be super clean cut. Yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. a dad, yeah, right? Yeah, he's a dad. He's a dad. He's dad. like, ooh, you mentioned a sixty nine here. That's gonna be a no go. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, I, I don't get you. <laughs> See, that's humor right there. Yeah, you say that right there. That's humor. No, it's a go sixty nine. We don't say, but you can say ninety six. <laughs> huh? It's the same thing without the sexual oh, connotations. Wink, wink. Just as funny. Just as funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Monique was mad because she won an Oscar, but she doesn't get like these. She doesn't yeah, get these fucking. Paydays. Okay, the last one. Yeah, yeah. He says you said fucking year. I was thinking making babies might have a funnier <laughs> ring to it. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Continue. Uh, anyways, anyways, she's just mad because she won an Oscar, and so a lot of people win Oscars, and they go like, "This is my payday, right? I get all these roles." But it doesn't okay. always work out like that for everybody. There's probably lots of people that won an Oscar that didn't, you know, turn into a big payday. I don't know. Yeah, like you still. Well, I mean, I mean you get rich. to work a lot, but I think she's like, I should be getting these ten million dollar. Well, like, she cranked out some pretty crappy movies. Yeah, for sure. Like, like obviously she's not some crazy draw. Like she's not a box office draw, Monique. Like you know, or whatever. She's just mad because yeah. in her mind she goes, "I should be." And then, anyways, and she <laughs> said, uh, "Yeah." She's some just people mad. just yeah. connect. It was all during the. It was actually yeah. It came out in, in February 2020. I just found this where she just like doesn't she doesn't get the the roles she feels she deserves or the pay. Yeah, but I just so now she's going scorched earth. See, th- that's one interpretation, yeah. and I'm on board with it to some degree, but I still think this is watching Cat Williams blow up uh, from going on and going and, and trashing everyone, and she's like, yeah, oh, yeah but I'm saying she said that. this stuff before Cat Williams went on. She was no saying, one's been listening. Yeah, I mean, she went on CNN. It was like an article for a day or something, like, uh, you know, or whatever. And then it So this is away. sort of like the hub for now, trashing everyone now. Now it's become that, yeah. I mean, dude, there was like... Isn't that crazy how things I, just I, become I, that, I, though? I turned on YouTube yesterday. There was, I want to say at the peak, close to like 200,000 people watching that live. 
I'm telling you, man, he's the spot to go. Yeah. But they're not listening because they like you. They're listening because you're going to fucking ju- dish the yeah, personal yeah, juice. Yeah, probably like the moment like there's no fucking gossip for two minutes. People are like, I'm out of here. I mean, listen, if you're going on and you're just like, hey, I have this like crazy dirt on like Oprah. Everyone's like, I'm listening and I don't what care who dirt, you are. What was their dirt on Oprah? I didn't. I'm not interested. Mm, I, I like Cat Williams, but I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not listening to the two hour Monique podcast to get some Oprah dirt. I don't really care about either of them. Yeah. You're a fucking big Oprah. <laughs> you always have been an Oprah oh, man. I'm an O head. <laughs> o tired. O tired. <laughs> that would be a perfect example of someone that TMZ would call fat. Yeah. Who? Oprah's put the five pounds back oh, yeah. on. <laughs> no, she's skinny now. Yeah. Found but that Ozempic pen. I. Oh, this is another thing that JJ was going on about, but he thinks that uh, Ozempic's uh, really going to fuck people over. Yeah, because you heard it on uh, the Joe Rogan that podcast. Is correct, ten, ten friend, no, that is correct, my friend. No, that is correct, Amundo. Every <laughs> single piece of information he has comes from a, someone else's <laughs> podcast, and it doesn't come. It comes from three podcasts. Yeah, yeah. Everything he knows comes from uh, uh, Rogan, Chris Williamson, or Tim Ferriss. Yeah, or Tucker Carlson. Mm, he didn't have that many Tucker facts. Yeah. Well, the, uh, yeah. I don't know. So, your joke, again, uh, became a reality. So, there's the thing. I, I don't know what it's called now, but it was the James O'Keefe basically goes on the gay dates with people. Yeah, the gay date. He literally went on a gay date. And it wasn't even... <laughs> he wears a disguise. It used to be some other guy, but I guess because... Uh, when you're going on your da- gay dates in disguise, do you think if they caught you, you'd be like, I'm, it's a bust. No, is that, what? <laughs> Get him, boys. I'm, I'm like Vito. <laughs> Guys, it's a joke. It's just a, it's just a joke. Guys, <laughs> that's a funny picture. Danny's on a gay date, and you just have a goatee over top of your normal beard, <laughs> like a, in a leather daddy like outfit. I'm a, gro- <laughs> I'm a groomer. Guys, <laughs> just, I'm just trying to get a scoop here. <laughs> you never Jour- heard of a scoop? Journalism, guys. Guys. So he basically journalism. <laughs> he went on this gay date with this guy, and the guy spills like every. He works for Biden, and he spills like every secret. And the article was basically explaining that at the White House they had to have like a meeting with all the people there and in and it's so funny because they can't they can't say like hey gay guys stop yapping on your dates right yeah 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 <laughs> but it's like legitimately gay guys that work for Biden can't stop going on gay dates and spilling all the beans once they get a few that's uh, not one of the crowds uh, cosmos in them they got a little chatty isn't that so funny though yeah. there's just an epidemic of gay guys that work for the Biden campaign that are on like date number one being like Kamala is fucking <laughs> no one likes her dude they're <laughs> They spill every bean. And it's so funny because it's literally like uh, James O'Keefe just with glasses on. It says James O'Keefe with glasses well, I on. Don't like know maybe if like gay a, guys are tapped into what he looks like. Hey, you think his fucking photo would be up anywhere anybody has any compromising information on the left to be like, hey, look out for this guy. Gay guys. <laughs> yeah, we don't want everybody look out for this guy, but more importantly, yeah. the gay ones. Well, I was just. To me, that is so fucking funny that they have to have like a meeting at the White House and being like, okay, so when you're on, not doesn't necessarily have to be a gay date, but in 100% of the cases, it was. Yes, it seems to be a recurring theme. (laughs) Keeps being a gay date. And they probably have to tread on that so lightly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, shame on them for getting busted on this. It's well, anyways, his juice was, he was sort of saying that, like, basically, no. Cognitive degree goes in the. Well, yeah. the cognitive decline stuff, everyone knows. That's not a hot. It's funny that uh, that is such a catty gay date thing to be, to be on a gay date and being like, I work for Biden. Like, between me and you, that's kind yeah. of funny. Yeah, right? between me and you, Kamala Harris, nobody likes her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't even seen her do any work in six months. <laughs> that definitely that would be a gay date thing to be like, oh, everyone else is so lazy. Yeah. <laughs> These fucking people. I do everything. I basically hold the whole White House up by my fucking self. Yeah. I mean, that's like the biggest surprise to me of this whole thing was that I'm like, gays have to like work to impress guys on dates and stuff. That's interesting. Yeah, that's. A I thought good- that was like a uh, <clears throat> a hetero thing. Gay guys on dates still have to be bragging about it. Yeah, they still got to be like impressing them. You go, really? Well, what if they're, go- they're maybe I guess if they're not thing. trying to, yeah, and I guess if they're not trying to seal the deal versus like actually maybe they want to be in a relationship. A bunch of chatty Cathy's though, and they had to do an f- official briefing to be like, shut your fucking traps, gay guys. 
<laughs> Imagine, yeah, they're like, hey, we're calling all the gay members in. We're having a closed door meeting for all the gay. And then there's like a couple who are like, look, we know you guys are gay. Let's get in here. Come on. All right. We'll cut the shit. All right. Secret Service has been following you guys all around. <laughs> look, we were, we were willing to hide your secrets, but now this is important. <laughs> Both of you in. <laughs> Yeah. Do you think that they're having? Do you think that there's any conversations at the White House where they're like, "We got to keep some of these gays out of the loop because they can't keep their yeah, jobs yeah. shut." Oh, well, I mean, fuck, man. That's like they probably have some kind of security clearance if you work at the White House. Yeah, and if they find out you're gay, they revoke your security clearance. This has nothing to do with sexuality. You're yeah, just, they, it's not. We don't. We're not revoking your security clearance because you're gay. We're revoking your security clearance because you're chatty, and you're chatty because you're gay. <laughs> The, the, <laughs> Technically not something we can get in trouble for, so they don't even try it. It is true that you were chatty because you're gay, but that is not why. We yes, are not penalizing you because you're gay. And you think the gay guys do the disproportionately affected. They're yeah. just like, you're not allowed to chat on dates, and you go, you know that this is disproportionately affected gay guys. That's our culture. Yeah. <laughs> Giving inside secrets about our workplace is our part of our gay culture. That's the thing, because if it was like chicks, chicks, the guy would be like, yeah, isn't like Biden, and they're like, I don't want to talk about work. Like chicks would probably want to like. If I was going on a date with a chick and she would worked for the Biden administration and she was dishing up all the gossip, yeah. If, oh, if she's di oh, she's dishing it. Yeah, I could, I would definitely be interested. Yeah, I guess he's like he leading questions though. He's like, so uh, what? How's this? It was like probably like an interview. He's like, so Joe Biden is he still uh, <laughs> oh there? Danny was doing the finger around the, the finger, ear for okay, those of you. For all of you listeners, the finger there. I'm also not wearing my sweater anymore. <laughs> I know. That's that's why. Yeah. Forgot, forgot that he was on audio because he's audio. He, Well, it's a very. Once he gets the pipes out, he couldn't imagine. It's that a very any, unseasonably warm day. You don't realize that he took off. his sweater off, so he did, couldn't imagine that anyone heard him taking his sweater off and then didn't switch over to video. <laughs> <laughs> you figure when I took it off, it sounded like. <laughs> But it doesn't. I do it in silence. Danny Polishuk has put on 30 pounds. This just in. Resurfaced <laughs> photos. <laughs> so girls have been up to real wacky shit this Always. week. And this is uh, probably... I'm going to go through a couple of them. The first one in the blogging and the TikTok world. They're running out of ideas a little bit. Yep. But Herkeldurking is the new one. And it's... The <laughs> So herkeldurking is actually an old Scottish term to lie in bed or lounge when one should be up and about. So basically, Being depressed. It's lying in your bed all day. They've got a, a lot of different. We gotta names. give a cutesy name to just depression. They have a lot of different names for lying in your bed like a sack of potatoes. Yeah, but they they do make everything inspirational. This is kind of the theme of the next little bit. Is there's a lot of different things here, and they've figured out a way to make them all inspirational. So herkeldurking is when you're just dicking around in your bed all day. Mm -hmm. And they said it's antithetical to hustle culture. So they're sort of sticking it to hustle yeah. culture by fucking sitting in their and bed hustle all cultures are like, great. This is exactly what we want from you. <laughs> yeah. We want you apathetic. We want you giving up, laying in your beds while we start our own bed business. Some might say that we want you sleeping while we work it. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, while well, I'm uh, currently creating my own bed business where you're going to have to buy <laughs> beds for me. Yeah, you fucking keep Herkeldurkin. I'll fucking sell you the Herkeldurkin <laughs> variety pack. <laughs> Comes with a sweat stain remover, PJs. Everything you need. Industrial side bucket of lard. Yeah, yeah. Popcorn. It, yeah, just coming into the bed and you're like, hey, w w we do have to go to that thing today. I'm Herkel Durking. Yeah. Don't bother me when I'm Herkel Durking. <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to. I told you to leave me alone while I'm Herkel Durking. You know Saturdays through Mondays are Herkel Durking. Yo, I'm really just worried about you. There's nothing to be worried about. It's a trend. It's a trend on TikTok. <laughs> I'm just Herkel Durkin. <laughs> I'm making a TikTok. <laughs> that is what it is. Yeah, you haven't left your bed for four days. It's a trend. You go, I think you're depressed. You go, no, if I wasn't TikToking right now, I'd be depressed. Currently, I'm Herkel Durkin. <laughs> this is the difference between being depressed and being a TikTok influencer. <laughs> I'm an influencer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you literally go, yes, it's depression if I'm not recording myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm actually Herkel Durkin I'm, and I'm an influencer. Yeah, yeah. I'm influencing the masses right now. What do you influence them? I'm also telling them they should Herkel Durkin. <laughs> <Hey, man. laughs> so you're sitting in your the bed. the Chinese like, stay winning. <laughs> yeah, definitely the tell Chinese. Tell you what. Chinese aren't Herkel Durkin. Yeah, I tell you how many fucking results come up when you search Herkel Durk on Chinese TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Literally, you search Herkel Dirk on Chinese TikTok and a video comes up that goes, go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you not working? <laughs> Why are you search Herkel Dirk? <laughs> Stop being lazy. Go back to work. Stop searching Herco Dirk. <laughs> yes. Sorry, she. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. <laughs> no, you click on the Herco Dirking thing and it just like reroutes you to. There's 24 hours in a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every hour left unread. Oh. <laughs> it's just my videos of Mark Wahlberg telling you what time he wakes up at. It's antithetical to hustle culture, and we're often inundated with focuses on maximizing every moment of the day. We're, so their new trend is not... <laughs> there's all these people trying to trend maximizing every moment of every day. So what we're doing is we're going to not maximize any <laughs> Anything, moment yeah. of any day. Sure. <laughs> it's quite the trend. Yeah. Sometimes prioritizing rest and having a slower... Th I, I, I do like the inspirational words where it's like, oh, you just sat around for a week. It's like it's called prioritizing yeah. rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having a slower start to the day. So I think a big, what Herkel Durking actually is, is the first couple hours of every day you dick around in your bed. So instead of getting up and getting out of bed, you get up and then well, you sort of dick around in your bed for a couple hours. I guess the hours. question is, like, if you work, a, like, are you just waking up earlier? Like, are you trading this for sleep? Do you think they're waking up earlier? No. <laughs> like, is this like, no one's I'm such a grinder, I wake up at 4 a.m. It's like a Herkel Dirk. <laughs> no, one's, no one's waking up a couple hours early. Obviously, you know, I'm in the gym by 6, which means I'd be up by 4 for the Herkel Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get my Herkel Dirk in, gotta prioritize my mental health. You had two hours of mental health, Herkel Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> no one's Herkel Dirk. <laughs> That's yeah. 4 a.m. Herkel Dirk start at 11 always. Mm -hmm. But here's even better. She believes the Herkel Dirk lifestyle, <laughs> it's always a lifestyle. It's always a lifestyle. <laughs> Definitely, you would have a, your wedding at the polyamorous wedding planner, whatever, Herkel Dirking area. Yep. Would you ever consider getting married just on bean bags? You're sitting down so you don't have to stand for that long? That's not terrible. <laughs> I now pronounce you slob and slob. Yeah. It can be a healthy form of self-care as long as it offers the space to think and simply exist without interruption and pressure. So it's a lifestyle. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow has another banger. She's always fucking cooking. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow is probably my favorite when she comes up with her thing. Chris things. Martin just every day just goes. I forget that they're together. I always they're forget They're not that. together. And every day he goes. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. I forget that they dated then. They, they, well, they have kids. <laughs> Okay, well, I forget that too. Yeah, yeah. Basically, no, I forget all of the parts until you remember yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, name some more things about Chris Martin and Gwyneth Paltrow. Also, forgot them. That's actually all I know is that they're just divorced. Uh, ex but, over but here. I'm telling you, he's no, probably you didn't forget. with all that goop nonsense with the vagina stuff. And he goes definitely. And Chris Martin does stay winning like China. Oh, I mean, dude. Remember when we were in Ireland? They're only allowed to have seven bands play. So Ireland. Uh, it was Dublin. Yeah. That was Dublin, right? Dublin, yeah. They have this rule where they can only have seven concerts a year at the arena because it causes too much traffic yeah, and shit. Yeah, 80,000 seater. And basically, so seven people come, and Chris Martin's one of them, and he comes for seven shows a year. So it's like the government basically says all your competition. It would be like if they go, I'm. you can only have five comedy shows in New York a year, and one of them's Ryan Long. Like, Chris Martin's living pretty, you know what I mean? Yep. Uh yeah, and he's dating Dakota Johnson. He's doing all right. Chris Martin is doing a okay. Yeah, but the the his the new thing Gwyneth Paltrow's up to, and she has her Goop. They're like a wellness brand, but they've come up with this new thing. Wellness gurus at Goop. So the she has a whole team of gurus coming up with this stuff, and the gurus at Goop are now suggesting that sighing can reduce anxiety symptoms and calm you down. So they're suggesting uh, when you wake up, you do five minutes of just sighing. Is that before the Herkle Durking or after? the I think you Herkle Durk for an hour. And five then minutes. <laughs> yeah. So you one do, more hour. You do two hours of Herkle. Durkin. So you lie in your bed for two minutes and then for two hours you go <sighs> I can't imagine I'm going to be less <sighs> depressed if I'm lying in bed just going <sighs> 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 No, you, no, this is what Danny does He sits in his bed Herkel Durkin He looks at the Big Mac container empty that he just ate and he goes <sighs> I already ate it <laughs> <laughs> it's like the one that got away. <sighs> if I had a time, if only I had a time machine, I could eat that puppy um, again. I gotta go to the bathroom, but it's so far. <sighs> <sighs> Just relieved myself. Yeah, in the bed. <laughs> <sighs> 
<laughs> Your new Hercule Durking bedpan S- by Gwyneth Baltrow. The problem is sighing and the relief of urinating are the same noise. <sighs> Did you say no? That one was a piss. <laughs> uh, that was a piss. Are you? Are you? Are you? Uh, <sighs> that's a sigh. Yeah, that's a sigh. <sighs> that's a cum. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you fucking bust a nut. <sighs> <laughs> Which one are those? That was all three right there. Those are all of them at once. There's... I told you to stop coming in the bed. Well, then remove the Big Mac smell. I can still smell the remnants. Good idea for JJ Candle, Big Mac smell. Big Mac smell would be all right, Candle. I don't know if his scientists can do that. If his R&D department can whip something up like that. <laughs> You know what is interesting? I was when I was doing taxes. Yeah. Uh, as much as you know, the tax man's a scumbag. Uh-huh. It is sort of a trip down memory lane a little bit, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like you're just like, oh yeah, that pizza place was all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I go through every single one of my, I go through all my credit cards, everything. Right. So it's like you literally go through all 365 days of your year, mm. and you're just like, oh right, remember when oh, we were in? Good. Like I was like, you know, I was looking at the things like, oh that bar we went in St. John's. Oh that was. I remembering like jokes based yeah. on like the oh, location. <laughs> it is kind of a fun. Uh, the, the upside of taxes Ryan Ryan managed to find The upside of taxes oh, That should forever. be Dude that should literally Be like a IRS commercial To get people to do more taxes You go Yeah taxes blow But think about all the fun memories I know I don't want to be on the side Of the IRS here uh, yeah. However it was sort of uh, There yeah. was a few things Well expenses too though Don't forget though Danny mm-hmm. So when you're going Through your expenses They are actually good Because you're yeah, like This exactly. is money they ain't getting Yeah exactly That's So I'm you're saying. just like You know what I mean You're seeing something like Oh that uh, Like I'll see like a prop or something like a shirt and i'll be like oh we write that sketch or whatever and it was like that's money that the government's not getting because it's no, expense. Sir. So, yeah okay, if, you're fucking your mitts on that yeah when you're going through money that you are paying them you're not happy about it but yeah. when you're going through money you're not paying them it's even it is yeah. good and ryan is even you're doing it on two levels because you're like ha, sorry migrants you're not getting any of this money <laughs> Sorry, you fucking Three migrants. Levels. You're not welcome here, and you're not getting my goddamn tax money. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, that was a funny joke, and also ten less dollars the migrants are getting. <laughs> and also, I'm like kind of being patriotic by not giving these goddamn migrants any more money. So that's kind of good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, there was a few things that I was like, I, I was like, oh, that's fucking funny. <laughs> what? Here's a good one. Yeah. I actually. Uh, one is I went to a uh, a restaurant and there's a restaurant called Kavanaugh's Written House. Oh, <laughs> Kavanaugh's Written House. And I looked it up while I was doing the taxes. I was like, was that like a joke or because you know like yeah. the Judge Kavanaugh and Kyle hey, Rittenhouse. Yeah. So I was like, was it? That is pretty in, funny. In I can't remember. Look it up. Might be a chain. Mm. But I was looking at that and I was like, there's a place called Kavanaugh's Written House. Like what? I was like, no. First of all, I was like, what Kavanaugh's did I buy? In Philly. <laughs> you know what I mean? At first, you see Kavanaugh's it, you go, Written House is a sports bar in Philly. Yeah, so oh we, yeah, we went here. You were with me. I was with you. Yeah, we got wings. So we went. See, we went, we went here after Helio. You're currently watching Danny do a trip yeah. down memory lane. It's not I so bad, that. isn't and, it? And we couldn't find anywhere to eat. And then we found. I didn't even know that it was called. Not Ka- so bad. Dude, and I didn't know lane. that it was called Kavanaugh's Rittenhouse. Neither did I. I think we, it was the only place that was open. Yeah, I think and we I, were waiting for our train. I looked it up and I saw that it was in Philly too, but then I forgot. Yeah, yeah but it was the only. I remember this now. It was the only. Yeah, you're right. It was the only place that was open. Why was it called Kavanaugh's Rittenhouse? <laughs> That's and you good, know what the thing was? It was like a written house. Like a written house is a type of thing. We are a dynamic sports. But it would be oh, funny the, if d- the neighborhood is called written house. Well, it would be way funnier if it was just like a fucking dog that was like, <laughs> I'm naming this after Kavanaugh and written house. Yeah, this was called like McKeegan's four years ago. <laughs> he goes, we're doing a little rebranding, people. Kavanaugh's written house. Yeah, we're just uh, naming our bar R. Kelly's Cosby <laughs> Cosby House. R. Kelly's Cosby House. <laughs> 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 but yeah yeah obviously yeah, yeah. some people are listening to that being like do not compare written to cosby sure no one's a patriot how about here's a good one george floyd was guilty <laughs> <laughs> pub and ale house <laughs> show vanity insanity <laughs> Club and ALS. <laughs> you could have a place called Chauvin's Gun. <laughs> <laughs> Chauvin's Written House. Chauvin's Written now House. Now we're talking. Yeah, exactly. Chauvin, <laughs> Chauvin. <laughs> Chauvin's Written House Gun Range. <laughs> But yeah, I thought that was, I, I was like when I was going through it, I was like ballsy. Yeah, exactly. And then I looked it up, and I was like, yeah, yeah, fucking. Yeah, it's been there. Okay, the streets written house. I thought it was like written house. The area is thing. Written, written house is the area. I thought it was a type of house called a written house. <laughs> Old school yeah. name for a bar. Yeah. Written house neighborhood. So this is what other wacky shit girls are up to because girls love reading books, right? Have you ever dated a girl that doesn't love reading? Currently. 
No, doesn't love reading. She's li- she's gonna be mad that I'm even saying this right now because she fancies herself a reader, but it never. No, happens. no, she doesn't fancy herself a reader. But when we met, she had this book on her nightstand that she was reading, and she's still reading it. How to settle? <laughs> <laughs> settle for less. <laughs> Well, I can happily say she didn't read it. So, <laughs> lucky for me. <laughs> no, I don't know what it is, but it's been sitting on her nightstand literally since I've met her. Mm. And she's still. <laughs> Positions for a small dick man. <laughs> <laughs> so, when did we meet here? Uh, we're coming up on four years. Still working away at it. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well,. These girls are positing. They said the reason why men don't read books, it's deeper than you think. And their hypothesis is men only read books like, uh, you know, self help books and stuff like that. Yeah. And it kind of relates to the Hercule Durkin thing because they're basically saying men only read books because <laughs> their hypothesis is because of misogyny and stuff like this. And they're going, men only read books to better themselves, whereas girls, because like we don't, we're not misogynists, we'll read books for fun. Yeah. I'm going to go as far as say I don't think any guys I know read books. I don't really know anyone who <laughs> reads fiction. Do you read books? Used to, yeah, but because the thing is, is even I don't know if, if you I'll say, ever read a book ever e- again. Even if you say, I've ordered three books in the last two years and I haven't read one of them. I've ordered twenty five books in the last two years <laughs> and I haven't read one of them. Um, you always think you're gonna, dude. Read. I brought a book with me to Europe, and it's a book I've read before already that I wanted to read again. It's like eighty pages, and I read maybe twenty pages of it. Yeah, on one flight, and then I forgot about it. And I no, go, a book. The, the thing is, even if you do self help, <laughs> you go well. Self help. I'm doing the audio book because I'm a grinder. Ex- exactly. Right. So you're like grinders don't just sit and read books. You can't Fuck speed no, the dude. slow process. I read on fucking three point five percent. That's what I'm saying, right? But the problem is that I have. Well, I'm noticed jacking up. Is that I have more of a sometimes like a recall issue with certain words that I used to definitely like. And you think would have been quicker, related? and it's I think it's reading related that I mm-hmm. I, I take a little longer sometimes to get to certain words so but i don't know if that trade-off is worth it because i'll just say something stupid and then but get my point across <coughs> i've never been a big word guy really yeah that is something that someone who's not a big word guy would say well how would you say <laughs> it? i don't know you think there's a big word for not being a big word guy uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> what illiterate. illiterate i don't know i've never been much of a literacy i don't know well, I, someone smarter than us can. <laughs> hey, I'm not saying I'm a big word guy either. Sounds like you are. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a large word man. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Added an extra couple letters on there. <laughs> but <laughs> like I'm sure Dennis Miller could have a whole turn that into a big mouthful. Yeah, I kind of annoys me when people use too big of words. Like, what yeah. are you doing, pal? Who are you trying? What are you trying to? That prove? was like the joke about Dennis Miller forever. He's just nonsense. Like you'd say, like just. Very flowery. It is very flowery. Content creator recently wondered aloud why every boy she knows seems to only read self-help books on productivity. Books that can be upheld as pinnacles of masculine identity. It's just so funny. Like, in this girl's, like, in a relationship, the guy's reading, like, you know, f- finance books or how to better yourself, and she's just, like, essentially watching TV on a book. Yeah. And then has to be like, well, obviously there's some reason that isn't just, like, he's trying to better himself. And you're like, no, the reason is reading books is a hobby. Yeah, reading books is a hobby. And reading uh, these books is not a hobby. And it's a hobby that some people have that they can look down on people who they deem to have. It's a high my echelon parents, hobby. My parents are both readers. They, they're big readers, and they'll definitely like thumb their, you know, they'll look down it's their a high hobby. at me and my brother who are just TV watchers and whatnot. Uh, exactly. You know. And probably it is better to uh, read than watch TV, but I don't do fucking neither. Yeah. The only time I was like watching TV ever is if I'm with someone and it's like you can't read books with someone like side by side reading books. <laughs> What's the point? That'd be the clingiest chick of all time. I haven't watched, can I just read my book in peace? I don't think I've watched a TV show by myself or a movie by myself in fucking five years. Mm. So she says, uh, uh, Ben Keaton stitched in uh, Kevin Hart's TikTok when she asked, why are you guys against having fun when you read with a clear and concise answer? Society, he said, is the answer. I grew up in a generation where the worst thing that you could be called is gay. So sure, they're saying that guys don't read because they're afraid to be called gay. That's mm. not the reason I read. Don't yeah, read. It's because I have literally just, I can't focus. 
I just don't, I mean, I don't have, I never slot it into my day. And I do feel like, yeah, if I'm going to, if I was going to block off like nine hours to read, or even if I was on vacation, it's like, yeah, I'll fucking read a thing that would help me. That's true. I, I feel mean, like I, that, the thing is, I do read a lot on my computer. Like, I read a lot of articles and stuff like that. I do read. I'm not like never reading, but. Just Twitter account? Would you ever print out an article and then read it at the beach? <laughs> Danny's at the like a beach. Danny's at uh, Tulum in the beach. Everyone has their books. Danny has a pr- printed out HuffPo article. Just bring the bring the newspaper to the beach. <laughs> but uh, pr- you printed out a few. <laughs> your girl's like, are you bringing a book? You're like, yeah, I printed out a yeah, few pages. Some from- listicles. I printed out these twenty <laughs> listicles. I'm gonna rip through at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Having printed out, I printed out a few things from the. Uh, <laughs> Washington Post. Yeah. That was the other thing from Tucker is I feel like uh the Washington Post uh guy asking to for him to release him yeah. was an interesting move because I get I bet you the got that guy being a Washington Post guy probably hates no, Tucker. No, Wall Street Journal. Oh, never mind. Yeah. I retract what I said. Yeah, Wall Street Journal. Back to books. No, Washington books, Post. books, I need my books. Book, 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 book. When men's tell me if this is the reason you don't read Danny. When men's masculinity is constantly being questioned, they're not given the freedom to explore the pastimes. They are told they are too feminine. I've never in my life thought books was like a female thing. Like I've never been like, oh, you're reading a book. What a feminine thing. To you know do. what? I do feel like it's a little. Really? Yeah. I've never thought that. But I don't feel like it's a feminine thing. It's chicken. I think it's, it's like a chicken. nerdier thing. It's the chicken before the egg where I'm just like, yeah, because everyone I know that reads a ton is like, I feel like every chick I know always like reads a lot. That's yeah. The nun note. Maybe my last girlfriend read a bit, but like not really. Well, this is probably the best one of the series of women uh, making things uh, inspirational. And I just got to find it here. Australia's first female-owned sex doll company. Oh, good for them. <laughs> what is fight, funny fighting the Patreon with the, you know, fuckathon 4,000? <laughs> hey, someone's got to do it. You know what else I saw? Why not be a woman? By the way, there was a thing that, uh, that uh, house owners, women own more houses than men in america yeah but that has actually a pretty reasonable explanation okay explain it to me so there's more no but there's more single women own houses in america in 47 out of 50 states the uh for single homeowners there are more women than men but the reason is because women live longer and they're mostly just widows okay Good point. However, I would say if that was the other way around, where they said men owned more than women, all the explanations it would be, be like a, the gaps are always reasonable explanations. You go, why do men make more money? It's like they work more hours. Like pretty, yeah, yeah. you go mind blowing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, were, so if you course. said, obviously, most things have an explanation. But well, that that's because the thing is, this isn't even one of those like gotcha type articles where it's no. But my point was, if it was the other way around, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I go. You would you would see need to close the house owning gap article right yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah that's kind of the only point I'm yeah this is it. like y- yes queen you slay for, for <laughs> yeah, yeah. fucking driving your husband to an early grave did you see that there was the uh, the AI brothel in Berlin yeah. I don't get it. I can't see myself ever going to that. Basically, you put on the goggles and you fuck like a doll. And then, so it's like... Why do you... Well, you're using a used doll that other these oh. guys fucking ran through. <laughs> this doll's been run through. <laughs> I, I couldn't see myself doing that. No. I... Why would... I I, I mean... Because in Berlin... You have to be some kind of crazy... There are like weird sex culture in Germany and stuff. But like, you got to be some kind of... Depraved. Next level weirdo. Or you like can't handle physical contact. I actually saw that guy. Get Ma- your own. Se- I mean, I that guess guy they can't Mario. The sex doll. You basically got a sex doll on layaway, and you go fuck it at the fucking brothel. That, that comic uh, Mario, uh, you know the yeah. mod- the German dude. He, I saw him do a thing, and basically saying that in Germany, the government, if you're handicapped, will pay for prostitutes for you. What the fuck? Yeah, because they just see it as like a human right and like a human, like a basic human right. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> It's been I'm you can, you can Deutschland. Pick, the meme, me and the boys walking into Dutch. <laughs> me, me and the boys walking into Parliament. <laughs> I love telling you. <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> I would like her to be Latino. <laughs> A Spanish chick, please. <laughs> Maybe two. Maybe three. <laughs> me, me and the boys walking into Parliament like... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like Stephen Hawking pulling up. 
Our horse, please. <laughs> One for the horse. Our horse. I'm very disabled. <laughs> Charge it to the government. <laughs> hey, man, then you walk away like Kaiser Sose. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, suckers. <laughs> walk away. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> <laughs> government pussies wild well i don't think the the their government employees i think they're just the government kind of acts as a go-between but what they do, do register mean? though they said in this article like all the so the government gives them the money no no no, no. i think that i that's a good question actually no i don't maybe you, might, you probably have to be like a registered government provider yeah like yeah but else. it says in this article actually about the berlin thing where they go all sex workers in berlin are you're registered like you have a license like you drive a cab I'm a registered sex worker. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they register. Like, it's all just so above board there that they're like, yeah, I have a license. Hmm. I'm a licensed sex worker. So do you think that the government sends the money? Do you think he has to watch? <laughs> he has to... I wonder, because, like, does he get to pick? Head of sex, dude. That's what I'm saying. Like, this, do you get to pick, or do they just send you some... That's a fucking bizarre job. You're the guy that matches, like, retarded people with fucking prosties. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't... Well, yeah. I guess once you have certain level of uh, cognitive faculties, I guess you're not allowed to. It's like your joke, kind of. Yeah. Because it's, like, illegal. And then, so, it must be people who, are, like, you maybe have, like, MS or something where your body just doesn't work, but you have a sound mind. Jesus. And then you can just pick some, and they just give you a website and just go, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm all for uh, those guys uh, banging prosties. I don't yeah. know if I should be picking up the tab. <laughs> hey, man, Germany's picking up the tab for all of Europe. I'm sure it's not an issue <laughs> for every fucking country that doesn't know how to govern themselves in all of Europe is basically getting paid for by Germany, so interesting like that germany that's the whole wild. thing is like the eu uh, so everybody complains in the eu because germany just like for all the countries that are just spending all this fucking money and don't know how to take care of themselves and germany just kind of covers it they do pick up the tab for everything yeah the common argument against sex dolls is that they're for perverts who can't form relationships with women who are so uh, uh, let me just uh say what's happening here before because we switched out a lot of things mm -hmm. so she's saying at first she rethought that it was a misogynistic thing yeah uh, with women because they can't handle uh real women and they want to be able to do whatever they want to the sex dolls and sex dolls can encourage misogyny and give me men free reign to do whatever they want fuck something that cannot protest that's what she thought at first and then now a woman runs a sex doll business right. and she realizes <laughs> i was gonna say though but if you're uh, like if you're a feminist wouldn't you be like hey it's better that this guy takes this out on this well it's a vice article they found a way to make sex you know what i mean but isn't there the other side we go like look just be thankful that he's not having to come in contact with a real human woman yeah obviously but anything you do if you're yeah, you're, yeah. you're misogynist if you fuck him you're misogynist if you you, you don't, don't fuck him yep can't win when i met um just mel the director of fun time dolls she offered a sex positive argument <laughs> sure but it's like legitimately and her sex argument argument was i make money yeah her sex positive argument was like yes but a girl's doing it now yeah, but girls making money from this so it's now sex positive you go oh I we all have thought of it that way we all have our fetishes if someone thinks differently uh and wants to have a sex doll uh there's nothing wrong with that she told vice so basically when a girl does it it's inspirational when a guy does it it's misogynist as it should be as it should be for mel the difference between fun time dolls and the numerous other stories providing fun time dolls that's what her thing is that's what that's, i wouldn't want to such a, a chick name for that that's, is a very chick name for them fun time dolls fun time dolls yuck leave me alone with them well if you're hercule and i'm taking us my fun time doll for a spin <laughs> And Dream Girls uh, was the female touch. All of the companies I know in Australia are run by men, and my customers appreciate the female touch. I'm not. I think if I was banging a f uh, female doll, maybe there's some benefit of the fact that you're like chicks made this, not dudes. But it's still the factory workers are factory. I mean, workers. they're still just like made in China, aren't they? Yes, exactly. Like, it's just silicone. I knew that I needed women in this space when I, the ulti. Ultimate titty fuck 3000 <laughs> jerk up mega jerk off machine. I finally, you know, what I mean, yeah, finally, women are entering the jerk off machine space, and I realize that there's nothing women can't do. No, no, they can even make silicon just as good as men. If you see, so you're you might have thought that you know, they can't name them as good as men, they definitely, yeah, yeah, they can't name them as good as men. I'd like to know what the other names are. They just call them guys. Probably just call them Stacy. Yeah, Stacey, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Not Super Fun Time or whatever. Fun Time Does doll. seem like a very J- Japanese name. Yeah. Super Fun Time Doll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have uh, a fucking banger of an episode coming on the Patreon as well. And the Bugman versus Bugman competition, which our lips are sealed on what happened, is being edited they as we speak. sealed before, though. They were not sealed before. But bonus episode every week. We have this full competition. It was actually really funny. And honestly, I think people are going to really enjoy it. And that will be coming out very soon. It is currently in the process of being finished at patreon.com slash the boys cast. And we will see you next week. Peace.